Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Let's lift our hands to the Lord and say, Lord, we glorify you. Thank you because you are alive, you are not dead. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lift your hands and give him praise. Say, Lord, we thank you because you are alive. We celebrate you. Thank you for paying the price. Thank you for becoming sin. Thank you for the power of your blood. Hallelujah. Many of us do not realize the power of the sacrifice of Jesus. You know, while the worship uh, team was leading us, while they were leading us in worship, I was just meditating on the power and the victory that Jesus brought for us. Hallelujah. I trust that at the end of tonight's meeting, God will grant us a revelation of what really happened. That not only will we rejoice, but we will know why. Hallelujah. It's very, very important. I have been meditating on the power of Easter. The word of God says, it says, better is the end of a man's life. Better is the end. We celebrate Christmas. We rejoice so much. We eat chicken. We eat turkey and all of this. But when it comes to Easter, many people feel it's just one of those religious things. But do you know the power that comes? Today, many, many years and centuries ago, Christ, the King, became seen on the cross. Now, I know we can feel evangelistic about it, but I pray that God will open our eyes tonight. That you see that this is not just an issue of evangelism. This is what Jesus did for us. Hallelujah. Lift your hands in one minute and say, Lord, thank you. Thank you for what you did on the cross. This is the basis of the sick being healed. This is the basis for miracles, prosperity, the grace of God. Inside and outside, just lift your hands and let's worship him truly. Lord, we thank you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We feel the rain of your love. Feel the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven. Let us hear Feel the rain of your love Feel the wind of your spirit Now the heartbeat of hell Let us hear Feel the wind of your love And the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us be so let it rain let it rain open the north gates of Hey! 
your spirit now the heart beats of heaven let us hear we feel the rain of your love and the wind of your spirit now the heart beats of heaven let us hear one more time worship us help me we feel the rain feel the rain of your love and the wind of your spirit Because you are not dead, you died, but today you are alive. And there was war in heaven, verse 7. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought with his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, 
that old serpent called the devil and Satan who deceived the whole world. He was cast out of the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation, healing, prosperity, greatness, wisdom, power, victory. Say, now is come soteria and strength and the kingdom of our God and of the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren, there is a name that he is called for the accuser of our brethren is cast down who accused them before God day and night for the accuser of the brethren the one who takes petitions before the father and says remember you are the God of justice and you never violate your justice the Bible calls him the accuser he found a ministry for himself against the saints. And every time he will stand in the heavens. The Bible makes us to understand that when the sons of God gathered, Satan was in the midst of them. And in the book of Job chapter 1, he said, Have you considered my servant Job? And the accuser sat and looked and said, God, truly, I have gone through and through the whole earth and I have seen him. But you have not protected him for nothing. Have you not built an edge of protection around him? Have you not blessed the works of his hands? Bible calls him the accuser of the brethren. That is the singular ministry of Satan. That has hindered the saints from coming into the place of power and grace and victory. He is called the accuser of the brethren. Because God is a just God. In fact, the Bible says righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. He will not compromise justice. So every time believers want to make progress, he took the ancients of old before God and petitioned God. Petitioned them in the days of Noah and they were judged with the flood because God had to be judged. The Bible says, John, in the island of Patmos, he said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And he saw the things that were, the things that are, and the things that will be. And part of the things that he saw was that there was war in heaven. The Bible starts by telling us that there was a wonder in heaven. A great woman standing who was about to give birth to a man child. And there was a dragon that stood waiting for the child to come so that he would consume the child the bible makes us to understand that the woman was taken to a place and she delivered that child safely there was war in heaven i hope you realize that this event happened before genesis chapter one that's how the flood in genesis one verse two came about are you following me now? John was seeing by revelation that this is what happened that brought Satan to the earth. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the power of your blood and the power of your word. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. I want to welcome everyone. Matthew Matthew chapter 14 chapter 26 sorry verse 14 then one of the twelve called Judas Iscariot went unto the chief priest and said unto him, What will ye give me 
and I will deliver him unto you. And they bargained with him for 30 pieces of silver. And from that time, he sought an opportunity to betray him. Hallelujah. Verse 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it. And broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Now look up, please. Hallelujah. Now, in John chapter 6, Jesus began to make an interesting statement. And he began to describe himself as the bread of life. He called himself the bread. He began to remind the nation of Israel of their fathers who ate manna in the desert. And he began to say that he was that bread of life. Then he made an interesting statement. He said, except ye eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no part in me. John 6. That's a very dangerous mystery Jesus was bringing. Are you there? John 6, verse 53. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no part. Ye have no life in you. He who eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. Hallelujah. Now, you must understand that all through scripture, from Genesis chapter 3 until the coming of Jesus Christ, the whole story has been about the restoration of the life of God back to man. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Bible makes us to understand that in the Garden of Eden, man fell how by falling to the deceit of satan and as a result he lost righteousness he lost the holy spirit who was and is the breath of life and the bible makes us to understand that there was a breach in love and communication and communion hallelujah now i hope you realize that god made man in his image and in his likeness so man was a partaker of the nature of God through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Are you following me now? Now man came by default having the exact righteousness of the word. The one we would later call Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He had the exact same righteousness. And according to the order and the design of God. Anyone who will ever have the Holy Spirit must have righteousness equal to that of Jesus. Are you following me now? Righteousness is the ability to stand before the Father without a sense of guilt without a sense of condemnation without a sense of sin adam did not know anything like sin he did not have that nature hallelujah and now we read how that satan came and by deceit caused him to doubt god's word and act upon his doubt by eating of the tree and man fell and from genesis chapter 3 every other thing that happened the law the prophets moses isaiah jeremiah was the restoration of the kingdom that man lost of the righteousness that he lost of the holy spirit that he lost now according to god's eternal justice the bible says the soul that sins it shall die ezekiel chapter 18 
the soul that sins, it shall die. And so in the days of Noah, when men sinned, God had to judge them. And he judged them with the flood. Hallelujah. And then men sin again. I hope you realize that no man could have that nature of righteousness. Hallelujah. Even Noah, the Bible says how that after the flood, Noah came. Every wicked person had died from the earth. Only Noah, his wife, three sons and their wives, eight, beginning new life on the earth. And the Bible tells us few verses later that Noah brewed wine and drank it and was drunk. I always ask the question, who brewed the wine for him? Because all the wicked people were dead. They had been washed in the flood. That tells you the sin nature was still inherent in man. Are you following me now? So every time God spoke about righteousness from the law, he only meant righteousness based on attempting to keep the ordinances of the law, not righteousness from the standpoint of Jesus Christ. And there was a great tragedy upon man because on legal grounds, listen to me, on legal grounds, man gave the kingdom, the victory, the authority unto Satan. And now we could not approach the father again. And so God had to begin to anoint people, the Levitical priesthood, the Aaronic priesthood, who would mediate between God and the people. Hallelujah. Because the people did not possess that quality of righteousness to approach God directly by themselves. And then they had an event called the Day of Atonement, when the entire nation of Israel would come. There had to be a way for man to become part of God. Hallelujah. And the interesting thing is that the way God designed for man to partake of everything that he carries is by eating his flesh and taking his blood. Follow me, Genesis chapter 14. Genesis 14. Verse 17. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of um, whatever the name is and, the, and of the kings that were with him at the valley of Shavet, which is the king's dale. And Melchizedek, the word Melchizedek means king of righteousness. Hallelujah. And the king of righteousness, the king of a city, now the then Jerusalem, Salem, brought forth what? Brought forth what? Melchizedek, the king of righteousness. The Bible says he brought forth bread and wine. Why bread and wine? And he offered it unto Abraham. And after Abraham had taken of it, he said, Blessed be Abraham, son of the Most High, possessor of the heavens and the earth. And in return, Abraham gave him a tenth of the portion. We see Melchizedek because the Bible tells us that the priesthood of Jesus Christ is after the order of Melchizedek. And now Melchizedek offered bread and wine. What was he doing to Abraham? By offering bread and wine. Hallelujah. And when Abraham took of that bread and wine, Melchizedek said, on account of your participating in this bread and wine, I, Melchizedek, standing in the prophetic office of the one who would be the christ i am the king of righteousness it is within my power to declare you righteous and on grounds of that i melchizedek say that you are blessed he said what is that blessing because he told abraham indeed all the families of the earth will partake of this blessing that you have received what is that blessing the bible tells us that that blessing was the gospel that was preached to abraham it's in your Bible. He said the gospel was preached to Abraham. Question, by who? Who preached the gospel to Abraham? Hallelujah. Now the Bible makes us to understand how that Jesus came and began to link what happened and was telling them, he said, people, there is a mystery of my blood and my body he said in the realm of the spirit 
for you to ever be part of me you must take of my flesh and you must take of my blood and he broke the bread and took of the cup and gave them they did not understand because they were spiritually dead people watch this there had to be a way and a spiritual mechanism for everyone to come into covenant with Christ so that he could pay the price for mankind are you following me now because if there was no way of coming into this covenant then every man would have to die for his sins according to the justice of God without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sins is that correct so if all of us if God were to be just then that means none of us can be born again except we die for our sins is that correct and now God had a plan and they said this is the plan instead of destroying the whole earth let us come up with a spiritual principle where every man will come into one man are you following me now so that whatever that man does he's doing it on behalf of the entire race now this is what was agreed in heaven and satan had no idea are you following me now and so when jesus came he began to seek to enact that spiritual covenant that will give him license to die for the whole world and we call it the last supper jesus went at table with them and he told them eat this is my body broken for you they did not understand they were eating of the bread and he said this is my cup the new testament and when they drank it spiritually listen to me spiritually the moment they took of the bread and took of the cup immediately the entire mankind came into Christ that's why are you following me now immediately that's why right after the last supper he went straight to Gethsemane to do what Paul tells us by revelation how that Jesus the one who knew no sin became sin can I tell you what he went to do in Gethsemane he went to Gethsemane to pray and then it was going to be the exit of the Holy Spirit from him because the sinful man had now come and become part of him I follow me now and the Holy Spirit is first called holy before spirit he was going to become the second Adam this is what we call the exchange or the, the basis of the substitutionary work of Christ it starts from the Holy Communion what is the significance of the Holy Communion number one it declares not just that Christ um, died and all of that uh -uh. it starts by saying the word communion means koinonia common union are you following me now it comes from two words common union that means you have spiritually allowed yourself to unite with another entity so that when you are seen in the realm of the spirit you are one are you following me now and so by the communion man came into oneness that's why the bible says in first peter chapter 1 verse 9 it says that we participated in the sufferings of christ how many of you were on the cross i mean in literal sense none of us we were not even born yet paul can dare to say i have been crucified with christ was paul lying when did all of that drama start in the communion so every time the communion is the first revelation of our oneness it provided the basis for us to come into christ but did we we did not come into the living and the resurrected christ we first came into christ and became the second adam with him are you following me now so that the legal claims of justice because he that whole god had no basis of blessing people because the accuser remember we started from revelation chapter 12 the accuser would always stand and say god you are holy you are great these men are sinful they are stiff-necked people and they rebel against you and if you bless them in their sins then truly you are not god are you following me now and so man comes in union with jesus christ now it's important to realize that everything Christ did for you, you accomplished it also in him. 
Are you following me now? It's not enough to know that Christ died for you. You must know that you died in him. The victory of a believer in this kingdom life is tied to the revelation of our oneness and our partnership. Are you following me now? Our life and our victory is rooted in Christ. You see Paul saying in Christ, with Christ, in Christ, with Christ. The authority over demons is in Christ. It's on account of your partnership with Christ. The basis of your victory in the kingdom is on account of what Christ has done and what he brought you by covenant to do in him. Hallelujah. And so when they took Jesus to Pilate and Caesar and all of the people and they began to question him, in Christ, we were participating. Are you listening to me? It was being credited to us that we were paying the price of the justice, the righteousness, the victory that will come. We were paying it in the person of Christ. This is the revelation a lot of believers are finding it very difficult to have. That they are in Christ. When Jesus was beaten, the scripture that Jagfa shared, Isaiah seen this years before it happened. He said, who had believed our reports and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? And then he began to give us a description of the passion of the Christ. How that he was beaten and disfigured beyond recognition. Hallelujah. Now, you must understand what happened. That everything Jesus suffered, first, he suffered for you. Second, you suffered it in him. Are you listening to me? Because without the accuser of the brethren, listen to me. Listen to me. Without the accuser of the brethren, there is no sickness. There is no poverty. There is no failure. Are you listening to me? The bridge between the believer and the manifestation of what Jesus died for is the ministry of the accuser of the brethren. And so we are studying from scripture how the accuser was silenced experientially. Because there are many of us that Satan, although Satan has been defeated, the voice of accusation keeps rising. Hallelujah. Against God's people. And many of us have not been able to enjoy the blessings of Easter, of the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, when you catch the revelation of the fact that in Christ, you are free from the accusations of Satan. The accusations of your past. All kinds of accusations that limit us. Hallelujah. When they put a crown of thorn upon the head of Jesus, do you realize that they put a crown of thorn upon your head in Christ? You were paying the price for your victory and your authority because only kings wear crowns. Everything that was happening from Gethsemane to the throne was for you. Are you listening to me? And that was done in Christ. So when they were beating Jesus Christ, you were being beaten in him. Are you following me now? Paying the legal claims to guarantee your divine health. They accused Jesus Christ before Pilate. That was in exchange so that no one will be able to accuse you again. The Bible says, who shall bring any accusation against God's elect? Hallelujah. And when they led him carrying a cross, I hope you, do you know why he was nailed upon a tree? Hallelujah. Two reasons. Number one, it was a Jewish way of killing people. Number two, do you realize that it was because of the tree that man fell in the beginning? It was the union of man. He identified with the tree, the forbidden fruit. And now Jesus had to take the curse that came from that tree. Because the Bible says in Galatians chapter 3, it says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Be made a curse for us, for it is written, in the mosaic law cost is any man that hangs upon the tree hallelujah he said that the blessings of abraham 
I told us what that blessing is. That blessing is not what we call the blessing. Hallelujah. The blessings of Abraham is not the same as the blessing. The blessings of Abraham is justification by faith. Hallelujah. That's what Abraham got. He was first justified by faith. The Bible says Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. So like faithful Abraham, if we believe God, that righteousness is imputed. On account of that righteousness, we now qualify for the blessing. And that the blessing is not just cars and houses. The, the one we call the blessing right now is not just a prophetic pronouncement to prosper. It's the presence of the Holy Spirit. He is the blessing. Hallelujah. Psalms 133 says, Behold, how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. It says it's like the oil that comes upon the head of Aaron, moving down even to his skirts and to his garment. He said, for there, where believers are gathered, he has commanded the blessing. Now the Bible says, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in their midst. In the person of the Holy Spirit, he is the blessing. Do you realize that all of the sufferings of Christ was to ultimately get the Holy Spirit back in us. I've said it again and again. Eternal life is the presence of the Holy Spirit in a man. Eternal life is not just one box that the Holy Spirit brings and drops it inside you and say, now you have eternal life. What is the concept of eternal life? Eternal life is the life of God. Alive, living, in oneness, in union with the human spirit. Eternal life is not the life you have when you are, when you get out of this realm. The real translation is not eternal life, it's God's life. Because everybody has eternal life. I hope you know that. Sinners, everybody. When the evangelists preach, they say, where will you spend eternity? Not will you spend it, you are certainly going to spend it. The question is the location. Hallelujah. You are certainly going to spend eternity. There are people who have been in hell. Hallelujah. And for your information, I hope you know that hell and the lake of fire are not the same. Hallelujah. Hell is a temporary place of torment. Hell is both a location and a spirit. Hell is found at the lower parts of the earth. The Bible makes us understand that when Jesus died, he descended to the lower parts of the earth. The lake of fire is part of the kingdom of God. God himself designed it for the punishment of Satan. Are you listening to me? So there is nobody in the lake of fire right now. It's in your Bible. Hallelujah. <laughs> After the judgment, Satan, death, hell, the grave, they will all be relocated to the lake of fire. So those who are in hell, the punishment has really not started. The punishment starts officially when Satan begins to join them in the punishment. So are you interested in Jesus Christ? <laughs> I'm not saying do you want him. Are you really interested? It's not compulsory. Hallelujah. For death is a spirit. Hell is a spirit. The grave is a spirit. That's why a question was asked. He said, oh death, where is thy victory? Oh grave, where is thy sting? It, it, it personifies all of these things. Isn't it interesting that when the Bible is talking about these things, we call phenomenons. It gives them uh, English. We call it personification, isn't it? It says there was a fourth man riding upon a pale horse, holding a pair of balances. And the Bible says his name is death. It's a spirit. That's why when the church is raptured, listen, when the church is raptured, death will, the Bible says men will run and look for that spirit called death and the death itself will run away. Read it. He said, let the mountains fall on us. Death, find a way to get us out of this place. Let me give you a little good old time religion message for many of you who have not had it in a long time there is something called 
the judgment. Say after me, the judgment. Let me tell you the implication. Because the Bible says when the Holy Spirit comes, he will convict you of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. We have tactically removed the ministry of the judgment and left only sin and righteousness. Because we are trying to tell people, come to Christ, you get a car, you get a victorious life. Wonderful. How about the rest? You must finish it. The Bible tells us, and people, we have all kinds of new age theories coming up, all kinds of spiritual jargons teaching that there is no word mentioned rapture in the Bible. That's very true. There is also no word called Trinity in the Bible. But we believe in the Trinity. Is that correct? The very, the Bible says, and Elohim said, the word Elohim is plural in the Hebrew. The singular is Eloha. Hallelujah. The Bible says when Jesus came out of the water, the Holy Ghost came upon him. That's the third person of the Trinity. Jesus, the Son, standing. The Father declares from heaven, this is my beloved Son. And so we see three distinct personalities. Proof number two, because Scripture must compare Scripture. And by the mouth of two or three witnesses is a matter established. We see Stephen when he was about to be martyred. The Bible says Stephen was full of the Holy Ghost. He looks up to heaven and sees the Father sitting and Jesus standing at his right hand. Hallelujah. And now what of the doctrine of the rapture? Is it true that one day there will be a sudden disappearance of people? I was studying a documentary about aliens that have begun to come upon the earth. And um, they put a genetic implant in people that can cause them to live 500 years sick free, disease free. Hallelujah. And now, many people do not believe that one day we are going to get out of this earth. I hope you know that we are going home. Question, where is home? Where is home? Don't feel bad. Your answer is correct. Heaven. Hallelujah. But the question is, heaven is not home because it's above the earth. Heaven is home because that's where God is. Because we realize that heaven is still going to come down in in what the Bible calls the new Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Heaven will come down again. Heaven is wherever Jesus is. Anyway, let's continue. And so Jesus hangs on that cross, becoming the curse. And now, hold on. Do you know that when man fell, the father turned his face away from him? Is that correct? Now, when Jesus came into partnership with man, what happened? The father now turned his face away from Jesus. The exact same way he would turn his face from every sinner. And on the cross, Jesus cried and said, Eloi, Eloi, Lamak Tabak Sanai. Father, why have you forsaken me? And the answer is obvious. I have forsaken you because on that cross, you are no longer Jesus the Christ. On that cross, you are sin, the sinner. Are you listening to me? Jesus became every prostitute, every drunkard, every thief, are you listening to me? Every arm robber on that cross. Paul saw this by revelation. And he saw that Jesus had become the second Adam. And then he died. Jesus died. He gave up the ghost, the Bible says. Which ghost? His human spirit, not the Holy Spirit. For the Holy Spirit had left Jesus since Gethsemane. Are you listening to me? That was the only reason why the people could take him and beat him up and blood came out. Blood is a sign of mortality. It's a sign that you are subject to death. Hallelujah. For do you realize that when God created man from the beginning, there was no blood. It was not a life that depended on blood. Bible says we are members of his flesh his body and his bones he didn't mention blood because when Jesus resurrected he poured his blood in the heavenly tabernacle yet he was still alive and he stepped in and said all hail he said let me prove to you there is a big hole on my hand 
there is another one on my side and it pierced right to my heart according to medicine a man gets up with a hole in his heart a big hole by his side holes in his hand and feet that's enough passage for blood to empty itself out of him and yet he's alive it is a quickly give me five pounds of blood let me sustain myself he laughed he didn't need to open the door he just walked in he said all hail when you understand this you will know the kind of life that he gave us are you following me now i know that every time we talk about the supernatural life many people just say don't bore us with all this supernatural thing do you realize that the life that jesus gave you was not just the life he walked with on the earth is the victorious life because on earth he had not conquered death are you listening to me when he conquered death he said i am giving you this life you are better than adam you are not adam adam was a quickening soul a living soul but in christ we are life-giving spirits see adam was powerful but he had no ability to give life to another man now in christ we have the ability that's why we can heal the sick that's why we can raise the dead adam did not have that ability so he was only a living soul I follow me now but right now we are life giving spirits we not only have life we have something called dunamis the ability to transfer that life to another person that's why you can tell someone on a wheelchair stand up in the name of jesus that's why you can prophesy and release life upon someone are you seeing the difference between the new creation and adam adam was only a quickening soul there was no need for healing and all of this he did not possess that ability the Holy Spirit was not living in Adam as a, uh, as a on, on account of redemption and all of this. The Holy Spirit was only living in Adam as a sustainer and the spirit of creativity. That was the only dimension of him that Adam knew. But now we understand that the righteousness that we receive is imputed into us by the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And so Adam was a living soul. And in Christ, we are life-giving spirits. Not only do we have the life of God, we have the ability to transmit that life. That's the reason why you can call someone who is a drunkard and his encounter with you, the life of God can flow through you to him. Hallelujah. That's why you can lay hands on someone and the power of God can flow through you to the person. It is scriptural proof that you are a life-giving spirit. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Very powerful. And now let's, let's look at the drama that happened in hell. Now Jesus goes to hell. Because when sinners die, they go to hell. Is that correct? So Jesus died a sinner. Where would he go to? He cannot have gone to heaven. Are you following me now? Very, very important. Now he went to hell. When he went to hell, Satan was already there having a wonderful party there was a celebration in heaven in hell why because jesus had died and satan said finally the one last hope the seed of the woman that was to bruise my head has now been defeated i follow me now so i can imagine all the demons saying hail satan truly you are god and while that ceremony was in hell it was brutally interrupted by the presence of jesus christ hold on Jesus went to hell without the assistance of the Holy Spirit. Are you following me now? He went to hell in the perfection of a man. When he stepped into hell, all the principalities and powers saw him and he was walking right straight to Satan. There's no time out. I've shown you that drama in the Bible. And the Bible says how that all the principalities and powers, they said since you will not bow in the temptation, you must bow now by force what is it about bowing you see when you bow to someone in the realm of the spirit how many of you do you know that the military life is a type of the realm of the spirit are you following me now you never salute a man in the military until you are higher than the man is that correct when a general is about to make another general he salutes to him and he resigns are you following me now and so order and hierarchy is powerful in the realm of the spirit now we see this happen 
because Satan wanted Jesus Christ, who is the image of the Father, to bow to him so that he will say, Father, I have achieved what I tried to achieve in the book of Revelations. I am truly now king of kings. If your son, who represents you, bows to me, then it means I am greater than him. Are you following me now? And so, when all the demons were in hell, Satan told them he will bow by force. And the Bible says they were upon Jesus Christ, fighting and struggling to cause him to bow to Satan. And according to the revelation that was given Isaiah, he said he shall see the travail of his soul and he shall be satisfied. Let me explain that mystery to you. Please, two people come. Any two people. One stand here and one stand here. Cletus, you stand here. Now, let's assume Cletus stole the property of Reuben. Are you listening to me? Do you realize that or, God forbid, let's assume he came to your house and killed your child. Do you know you, your satisfaction is when you see him being punished? It's not that you're a bad person. Are you following me now? Why do they punish criminals? To appease the ones that they offended. Are you following me now? So, when we sentence this person to 30 years imprisonment, at least it's hard to calm down. Are you following me now? Isaiah said, because man offended God, there must be one who must be punished to appease his heart. He said, he shall see the travail of his soul and he shall be satisfied. And that was what was happening. When the demons were upon Jesus Christ, they were upon us in him. And while we're paying that price, when the heart of the father was appeased, the Bible says that he made a public show. Suddenly, when the legal claims of justice had been satisfied, Jesus made a public show of them. The Bible says he triumphed over all the demons in hell put together. Do you realize that power? How many of them oppress you? The Bible says all of them came together in unison. They said we need to cooperate to get this done. And in their greatest strength, they were defeated. And then Jesus went to Satan himself. See how powerless Satan is. And Jesus said, now give me the keys. No argument. Now, hold on. Do you realize that there needed to be a legal basis to collect the keys? Because when Satan was tempting Jesus Christ, he was using the dominion that was given to man. He said, Jesus, bow to me and I will give you these kingdoms. Can you imagine Satan mocking Jesus? And Jesus never said, you are a liar. Because it is true, the keys were with him. He collected it from man. Jesus only laughed and said, I'm coming on legal grounds. Are you following me now? Now he went to Satan and said, who were you talking to some years ago? Let me have the keys. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, the beautiful part is not that he collected the keys. Because we were in him. I've said it again and again. All of us said, give me my own keys. You have oppressed me. Let me receive it for my family. I receive it for my destiny. I don't care where I'm coming from. I know the few people in my village. But give me the keys. I have been called out of every tribe. This is what happened on Easter. This is what happened in hell. Are you following me now? Revelation chapter 1. He said, I am he that was dead. But now is alive and I hold the key. And Jesus said, I will give you the keys. Keys represent access. So the earth, listen, the earth does not belong to Satan. He only owns the system that governs this earth. Satan does not own the world in terms of its structure. Are you listening to me? He only earns, he only um, has a mindset are you listening to me an ideology that's why i keep telling people the gospel is not just a message the gospel is a mindset it's a value system are you listening to me it's a value system that seeks to enthrone christ as king and enthrone his government here on the earth if your message of salvation is only a message that gets you saved you will not be effective are you listening to me 
the gospel of salvation is he said go into all the world cosmos and preach declare impart give them this mindset that makes jesus king of kings so everywhere you are you have a mindset that seeks to enthrone him and give him praise are you listening to me and when jesus died he defeated satan and after he defeating satan he was about to get out of what we know to be hades the place of the dead hallelujah because the bible lets us know that when jesus resurrected he resurrected with a number of other saints who were dead but could not be in heaven at that time because they were not dead in christ no man comes through the father except by me i follow me now and when jesus resurrected the bible makes us to understand that he stepped out of hell on his way coming back to heaven i mean coming back to the earth there was a little drama that played itself again suddenly he was coming out and according to psalms 24 a revelation was given to the psalmist he said lift up your heads O ye gates and be ye lifted O ye ancient doors that the king of glory may come in come in from where these were passageways that interfaced the, the earth and the realm these were doorways they were portals to the place of the dead and the gates because the gates were not just non-living things in the realm of the spirit look up let me give you a shocker in the realm of the spirit everything is alive everything is alive are you following me now that's where all of the people that get all these things and act films you see all of these films they act that a dog can talk your car can talk your shoe can talk they got it by divination and sorcery they were able to open up themselves to see from the realm of the spirit in the realm of the spirit you will see the tunes that are coming from this keyboard they are singing praises to god and they are alive they are not dead are you listening to me that's the reason why you can be crying right now and they play a song suddenly you feel happy what happened what happened there was an activity in the realm of the spirit you didn't just hear music that's why for all the fans of Rihanna and the rest that's exactly what happens when you sit under her anointing and you receive all of the demonic impartations you say it doesn't matter you say I don't listen to Rihanna there's this cool guy doesn't offend doesn't do anything nude it's just nice every time I I want to sleep or I just want to meditate I sit down Yanni and all of the people and we like them so much now let me tell you something even if they write a song called Jesus Jesus you are truly the king of kings you will receive impartations of demons from their songs because when you listen to a man your mindset is not just change you receive the spirit that brought motivated whatever the person is doing hallelujah and Jesus rose again he said who is this king of glory and then there was an answer from heaven the Lord strong and mighty why did he give him the attribute of a warrior because he just defeated satan he said the lord the one who is strong the one who is mighty say lift up your heads O ye gates and be ye lifted O ye ancient doors he said who is this king of glory he said the lord of hosts is his name and suddenly on the third day jesus christ resurrected the same spirits that left him in gethsemane came and breathed upon that body and the living christ listen the way they embalm people gents 107 students remember even if you are not dead if they embalm you that way you must die hallelujah it's not like our days that you can pretend if you see armed robbers and just say you are the way they embalm you be sure you are going to die so how did jesus christ remove all of those things that's why Paul said that you will comprehend the power 
that was released to bring him back to life. The same thing happened to Lazarus. When Lazarus was tied hand and leg, Jesus called him out without walking. Lazarus came out. His legs were bound because he said, lose him and let him go. So how did he walk from his grave to come out to the front of the tomb? The same power of God's word brought him out. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I needed to comprehend the power of Easter. And now Jesus rises from the dead. And then the Bible says, watch this. He arranged the clothes that they used to wrap him. It's in your Bible. He arranged it. But I find something interesting. From Bible history, we find out that he only arranged the one that they used to wrap his head. He did not arrange the one they used to wrap his body. And Paul, understanding by the Spirit, says, we do not see all things under his feet, the feet of the church. He said, but we see Jesus. Jesus has completed his work. Follow me. Now, Jesus is alive, standing. And Mary sees him, wanting to touch him, says, Rabboni, say, no, do not touch me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. What was he going to heaven to do? The book of Hebrews. For there to be atonement, there must be what? Blood. Without blood, there is no atonement. Are you listening to me? Now Jesus drained his blood. Follow me please. He drained his blood. Just like the high priest would drain the blood of the lamb. And he took it to the heavenly tabernacle. Because the tabernacle that was built in the old was a prototype according to Hebrews. Of that was which was in the new and Jesus entered the heavenly tabernacle and poured and poured that blood upon the mercy seat are you listening to me when he poured that blood upon the mercy seat now he said man on legal grounds when you receive me the father can now look at you because eternally he will only see you through the blood and anything seen through the blood is holy anything are you listening to me the presence of God and his blood makes everything holy. Moses is standing on a dusty ground and God says remove your shoe for where you stand is holy. What makes it holy? Who swept it? That's the same way that blood and that presence comes upon a bad sinner and God says you are holy. Say God don't kid me. God says well you can choose to believe it or not but as far as I see I see you standing having the exact righteousness of Jesus. You say, Lord, I just took one bottle of beer before becoming a Christian. While they were preaching, I was busy drinking beer. God says, well, that's your way of seeing it. I'm telling you the present reality from the perspective of heaven. Not guilty. I wrote a book about it some years. Not guilty. Listen, not guilty does not mean this is the power of redemption. When you go to the court and you do something wrong, what do they say? Guilty but pardoned, isn't it? So guilty means you actually committed the offense. Are you listening to me? You actually committed the offense, the offense but someone pays the price. Now Jesus looks at us and says you are not guilty. Not guilty means you did not commit the offense. How about God? How about God? I didn't steal you didn't cheat in your exam hall see this is why the faith life is very difficult for many people to comprehend God says not guilty so who committed the offense whoever was on the cross ah whoever was on the cross God looks at you this is why Paul said behold what manner of love let me prove it to you. Abraham. The Bible says Abraham did not waver at the promises of God. But have you not read your Bible? Let's be honest with ourselves. That Abraham was doubting and in fear to a point that his wife said, Toh, 
since I cannot give you a child, here is my maid called Hagar. Why did Abraham say, no way? God has spoken. I am convinced his word is true. Abraham said, thank you. I've been thinking about it. I, I just didn't want to offend you. Are you following me now? Hagar got pregnant and gave birth to Ishmael. Go to the book of Romans chapter 4 and read the interesting thing that God has to say about Abraham. Look up. God said this. Abraham wavered not at his faith through unbelief. Ha! Ah. He said, Sarah considered not the deadness of her womb. Didn't Sarah laugh? When you understand the power of redemption, the accuser will seize his hold over your life. Jesus entered the temple and saw people um, doing all kinds of things, business, selling animals. He would have kindly, politely, as a gentle savior, reported them to the high priest, Caiaphas. Jesus went and said, I'm coming. He rolled a whip and carried it. The Bible says he overturned their table. Is that no wickedness? And flogged all of them. And the Bible says Jesus never sinned. The Bible says that we have a high, we do not have a high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. He said he was tempted in every way like us, yet without sin. If God can look at Abraham and Roland Bock, many of you go and read it, Angels on Assignment, the account of Roland Bock, when he went to heaven, the files of Abraham was opened unto him. When it was opened, he saw all the places where Abraham was greeting people. And they were, it was recorded in heaven. He never saw where Abraham slept with Hagar. He told the angel, he said, there's a mistake here. Go and read it. It's in the book. Roland Bucky has gone to be with the Lord in glory. He said, Lord, what is this? And God said, only the righteous things are recorded here. Listen, if the sin problem is not solved, then Jesus really lied by telling us he died. Are you listening to me? If the sin problem is not tackled, many of us, when the accuser comes, listen, without a past, there is no accusation. You only accuse people with their past. You cannot accuse a man with his future. Are you following me now? Let me give you a revelation in this place. The only basis of accusation is that you have a past. The Bible says, therefore, if any man is in Christ, that man is a new creation. He said all things, the basis from which the accuser of the brethren can get the basis to accuse you, all things, your drunkenness, your smoking, your sleeping around, your occultism have been washed. He said you have become new. This is present tense reality from God's perspective. The Bible says there is therefore now, now, there was in the morning, there was yesterday, there was day before yesterday, when you wrote your last exam, there was. He said now, 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 I don't care even if you slept with someone before coming, there is therefore now no condemnation he didn't say to every christian to them which are in christ so every time satan comes and says cletus when you were 14 years remember your mother's pot now you want to be great i want you to know you are a failure ask him two questions question one where is your birth certificate because you are not even qualified to be around the earth only those who have bodies can function in the earth. Satan is an illegal occupant upon the earth. Even Jesus, when he needed to come to the earth, he had to wear a body. Satan, where is your body? The next time a demon hangs around your ceiling and is disturbing, tell him, come down. If you can show me a body, 
we can talk. Oh, for they do not have physical bodies. That's why they need human agents. When Jesus was going to cast them out of the man with gathering, they said, don't kill us. We no longer can function. We have been in this territory. They look for the closest animal. According to animal farm, after man, he speaks. And they said, drive them to pigs. Your father, when he got a job, your father was the director of this and that and he squandered some money. None of you, none of you, it will not go well with you. And listen, listen, I have a serious problem with people that go into people's past. They say, start telling me everything that happened from when you were two years old. You say, I slept with somebody. say, I'm writing. Just keep talking. Listen, hold on except jesus lied or we don't know what we are believing are you listening to me the bible says if any man be in christ it is a gift can you just accept it by faith that lord not only have you died but my past has been washed so that every time you are moving and you see anybody that reminds you of your past the faith of god rises up within you and you say ah, you are looking at the wrong person we stole together when we were in primary school yes but i am the righteousness of god in christ it's not on account of what i have done without a past there is no accusation the bible tells us in the book of revelation that the accuser of the brethren the one who goes to your yesterday and peeps all the things that you did against god and picks them up as testimonies and goes before god every time Watch this. Every time God wants to bless Reuben, the accuser intercepts and said, Lord, to bless him with all this, with all this, and watch what happened. In that great contest, his accusation was replaced by the blood. So every time God looks, he sees through the blood. Every time I stand to minister to the sick, I never try to minister out of my own perfection because sometimes I just shouted at somebody before coming for the meeting. So why are you allowing the people to stand up? But then I come in the perfection and the righteousness of the son of the living God. And when you speak to those demons, the demons do not see Joshua Selman because if it's me they are seeing, they'll do to me what they did to the sons of Sceva. Every time the demons see only you, you will know by their response are you following me now but when they look at you in the realm of the spirit they see you standing with the very righteousness of the son of god zechariah zechariah if we don't get this our purpose of celebrating easter is useless zechariah then we'll pray tonight is a communion service many of you are used to taking communion without revelation but i pray that god will grant you grace let me show you an interesting story that depicts our salvation i like the name that was used may god bless zechariah may god bless the holy spirit zechariah chapter 3 Why was your name not there? So I can literally just pick up my Bible and say, sit and read. Help me and read. Let's read on. And he showed me Joshua. What did he call him? What did he call him? Take note of that. Let's read on. Standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand. This is a prophetic picture of what Satan attempts to do every time in the realm of the spirit over your life. Let's read on. Standing at his right hand to do what? To do what? Verse 2. 
And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuked thee, O Satan. Even the Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuked thee. Is this not a branch plucked out of fire? Read on. Now Joshua was clotted with what? Look up. What did the Bible call him in verse 1? He said Joshua, the high priest. Now the Bible tells us that Joshua was clotted with what? And stood before the angel. Verse 4. And he answered and spoke unto those who stood before him saying, What? Take away what? The filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with a change of raiment. Verse 5. And I said, Let them set a clean turban upon his head. So they set a clean turban upon his head and clothed him with garments. And the angel of the Lord stood by. Look up. This was a prophetic picture of what was happening in the realm of the spirit. The, although Joshua had been called to be the high priest by himself, do you realize that in all of this story, Joshua was silent? Are you following me now? That means we did not contribute anything to our redemption. Nothing. Nothing at all. There are many believers. Now I'm going to soon bring a strong balance. There are many believers who are trying to be holy. They are trying to be sinless. They are trying to be everything. They wake up this morning and say, Lord, throughout this day, I can't remember accusing anybody. I didn't look for anybody's trouble. By the way, my roommates are not even around. They travel. So, Lord, on account of my holiness today, let my prayers be answered. There are so many people that have been taught that and they do not realize that you come to his throne of grace not on account of what you have done but on account of what Christ has done for you. Are you getting it now? Very, very important. So redemption offers us the opportunity that our past can go away. Now, it's difficult for your, for your past to get out of your mind mentally. Are you following me now? But you must come to a point where you realize that the Lord does not judge you on those past again. Are you listening to me? You see the reason why on the basis of this, God can release the power of God to break you free from whatever is wrong and say from your village. In our village, we used to do this. In our village, we used to do that. And on account of that, they released a course. And they said, everybody in our village, you will never get married. When you get to 25 years old, you will die. When you realize this, you will find out that your past, from the day you got born again in Christ, your past has been done away with. Let me ask you a question. Do you believe this? Because if you do not believe it, then you are not a believer. Stop calling yourself a believer. A believer is one who believes something. What do you believe? Hallelujah. Now, but here is the balance. When you truly understand what righteousness is, you will think it's a license to sin. Is that correct? If I don't balance this, I will not help you. Because many of us really rejoiced. But if you go with that half revelation, you will go to hellfire. Despite all of the things I have preached. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Now, Paul said, Shall we continue in sin that grace will abound? So now that I know that I am seen through the blood, can I keep sleeping around as the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus? Lying around as the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus? Looting around in Christ? Cheating in Christ? Doing all of these things in Christ? bribing in Christ. All I need to know. And listen friends, I'm helping us tonight because there are all kinds of teachings. There are teachings that teach that when you sin it's your body that sins, not your spirit. And your body is going to die and remain here. There are real people in hellfire. Some of them left this morning. They are there. Are you listening to me? Be careful. 
what God does is he grants you grace listen the Bible says if we say we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us but if we confess our sins God is faithful and just to forgive us of all uh, you know iniquity and all of that and all of that now what that means is this listen to me it is not a basis for you to get up and go and begin to mess around there is a difference between transgression and iniquity I'm helping us solve the sin problem right now are you following me now what is transgression to transgress to violate a set principle transgression we do that all the time isn't it all the time when out of annoyance you look at your roommate and call them a name that you have not mentioned for years that's not iniquity that's transgression no man hear me is in hell because of transgression every man who is in hell is because of iniquity what is iniquity iniquity is a perpetual listen willful continual state of rebellion against the principles and the order of God in spite of the convictions of the spirit and the operation of the word of God take note willful perpetual continuous if it is on the basis of transgression none of us will go to heaven look up are you listening to me Paul the apostle that we respect said something in chapter 7 he said the things that I do not want to do I find myself doing them the things that I want to do I do not find myself doing them he said all oh, wretched man that I am this is Paul the apostle he said who shall deliver me from this body of death are you listening to me there are many of you that because of certain maybe you were given to uh, pornography and and and, and um, um, um sleeping around either as a result of your past or the environment that you came from now you got born again and truly you love god are you following me now but here and there you find yourself drawing back now listen to me listen to me i want to i want to give you a revelation that will help you are you listening to me every time you find yourself in those situations whether stealing or you find yourself do all of these things the holy spirit because you are born again before you were born again it was not an issue i seen that you do anything and just go scot free but now the holy spirit lives in you he represents the presence of the kingdom i follow me now the convicting power of the holy spirit is upon you and you are crying you are listening to me brothers and sisters there is no forgiveness without a willingness to demonstrate repentance are you hearing me forgiveness is only effective when there is repentance a repentant and a contrite heart is that heart that is always willing to make amends to adjust are you listening to me and on grounds of that God looks at your faithfulness David killed more kings he killed more people than any king slept with Bathsheba kill Uriah hear what God has to say about me David you are a man after my heart how about God what kind of person are you am I blessing someone tonight the accuser of the brethren because we are in Christ we were with him when Satan accused you he already accused you in Christ and Christ has triumphed over him the Bible says Satan was casted from heaven there is no more place for him. When God casted him, he took you to heavenly places. Now you live far above and beyond the realm of Satan's accusation. But when sin becomes a pleasant experience for you, when it becomes a willful, perpetual, if I smoke for instance, and right now I know that after koinonia, I'm going to go and smoke. It's not, I'm, this is, I hope those who are recording it are seeing that this is an example. For you say, I always knew it. I always knew it. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? When your heart is made up to be rebellious, you know the principles of God and willfully, consciously, perpetually, and continually. Let me tell you something. The mercy of God is new every morning, but the mercy of God has boundaries. Are you listening to me? See this 
podium like the mercy of God. This is what rebellion does to you. It keeps pushing you out of the boundaries of God's mercy. Are you listening to me? A day will come, you will step out. Outside of the mercy of God, everything you find is judgment. Are you listening to me? That's why you can be surprised to read books and find out that there are believers or somebody who claim to be a Christian who is in hell. And you're like, what in the world is that? Don't you dare say it's a lie. Because those who went to hell are too serious to lie to you. When you go to hell or heaven, anyone, you come back with an impression, you'll be too serious to joke with people. Are you listening to me? So here's the balance. My past. Satan can no longer accuse me with my past. Because in Christ, the advocate speaks for me. Are you listening to me? So I walk free. I love the Lord. I sincerely love him with all of my heart and I desire him. The Bible says, I write these things to you that ye sin not. And if ye sin, ye have an advocate with the Father, even Jesus the righteous. What has Satan been accusing you of? What has Satan been accusing your family of? It has stood as a bridge between you and the things God wants to do in your life. God tells you, I want to make you great. Suddenly you hear the accuser of the brethren. He steps up and he says, no Lord, you cannot be just. Tonight I bring you a message. On account of the shed blood of Jesus Christ on the Calvary, one of the things that it does to you is it silences the voice of the accuser. Say after me in the name of Jesus. The accuser is silenced over my life. I cannot be judged from my past because I love the Lord and his blood atones for me. Yes, believe this. Otherwise, Jesus Christ wasted his time by dying on the cross. If the sin issue was not solved, then what exactly did he come to do? Are you listening to me? Right now, what is going to be your basis of manifesting the life of holiness? You first receive the nature of holiness by the presence of the Holy Spirit who lives in you. And then you begin to manifest the acts of holiness. Are you listening to me? So you don't try to end pornography and stealing by resolutions. You write 20, I will not do it again in your book. Immediately you finish, you find yourself violating it again. He does something to you. This is the mystery of the communion. Watch this. Common union. You were with him in death. Are you listening to me? He defeated death. He defeated sin. Now what happens? By the communion, every time you take the communion, this is what you are announcing in the realm of the spirit. Satan, remember that I died with Christ. Are you listening to me? And now I'm alive with him and I share a common life. That's the life that gives me victory over sin. That's the life that gives me victory over Satan. Are you listening to me? And so an ability comes upon you. Suddenly you find out that you have power over pornography power over all of these things you find out that when that same spirit that comes to lure you there is an ability the holy spirit reminds you of your oneness in christ and suddenly you see that you have victory over sin you no longer run away you are above it are you listening to me when the guy who used to sleep around with you calls and says how far you don't just off the phone and say i'm afraid you pick the phone boldly and tell him, mister, there is something that has happened to me. I am one with the living Christ. Are you listening to me? I, I'm not just trying to shun you so that you will narrowly live my life. You cannot, he says, sin shall no longer have dominion over you. Sometimes we share it and we, just I say, if it's not because of the revelation of God, maybe I'll have children by now that can fool your luxurious hostel. Don't you know I'm a young man? Oh, but there is an ability. I stopped struggling when I found a scripture. Jude 24. Now, unto him 
who is able to keep you able to keep you i tell you without fear or favor i can say it by the grace and by the mercy of god and i can attest for my brothers we are living a life of true righteousness in christ if you are a lady here and have ever made any advance or at you or any of my brothers stand up i don't mean sleeping just to come close stand up we're in the presence of god there is an ability of christ don't say we are young people and our generation has peculiarities nonsense if you are in christ you are not only born again there is an ability in you there is an ability are you listening to me you want to come and bribe me i am one with christ i share a common union common union i love what he loves i hate what he hates not just by my will by the effectual working of his spirit in me are you listening to me you need to break the power and the struggle and the hold of sin and all of these things that keep believers down for god is faithful listen easter gives us an opportunity to stand upon sin and the works of darkness you can live a life of true holiness and righteousness in christ not by struggling but by realizing your common union with christ hear me and when there is no more death in you the accuser can no longer speak then you will now have the ability to release that life into others are you listening to me this is the blessing of easter the blood of jesus christ number one atones for our sins number two cries against the accuser every time you kill a man his blood will haunt you is that correct jesus allowed himself to be killed by satan through the roman soldiers satan did not know what he was doing forever every time we take the communion satan sees the blood the moment he sees the blood he remembers that he is a murderer just like cain remembered when he killed abel the blood of abel cried for vengeance every time we take the communion the blood cries against every sickness in your body the blood cries against every ordinance and every covenant are you listening to me the blood has a voice and it cries let me tell you what it cries mercy in other words no accusation not guilty the blood cries mercy are you listening to me this is the power of being born again so I can walk high. I can walk scot-free. Thank you, Jesus. We are going to pray. As you take this communion, listen to me. Many dramatic things will happen to many of you. Are you listening to me? You are taking, this is not just speaking the word. This is um, maybe just juice and, and, and the wafers. But I need you to know that this is the revelation that will make it become the literal body the bible says when we do this we take the literal body and the blood of christ what does that mean you are enacting and enforcing in the realm of the spirit that you have common union with christ say after me i am one with christ the bible says he that is joined to christ is one spirit he that is joined to christ one spirit victorious above sickness victorious above poverty victorious above failure when Jesus rose again, we were risen in him. Now that he's seated, the Bible didn't say we are standing in him. We are seated. A king only sits when the war is over. So we function from the state of rest. What we do, hear me, I've said this again and again. What we do is not to fight Satan in the literal sense of blow me one, I blow you. If that is your revelation, repent tonight. Because when you are left one on one with Satan... It's not even him who will fight you. Are you listening to me? Our job as believers is not to fight Satan. Our job as believers is through the weapon of prayer and the weapon of the word, we enforce the victory that has been established for us in Christ. Are you listening to me? When we speak and we say we dethrone principalities and powers, many of you just imagine yourself in the arrow. Now, let me tell you,
The realm of the spirit is very funny because you can be caught up in a vision and you see everybody with a soldier, I mean a soldier and a sword, and you bring back that revelation and start misleading people. Say, everybody carry your spiritual arrow and then you carry it. You say, stand at a tease and do this. And then now, now say, everybody, look, listen, let me tell you. If that is your revelation, Satan will help you to share arrows. Are you listening to me? Please don't get me wrong. I don't speak any against any ministry. I'm just trying to bring us to a point of revelation. So as you take this communion, don't just stand as we do those days when I was in the seminary. You had to place your right hand on your left and walk sacredly in all piety. And when you stood, you would either stand or kneel down. You, you don't pinch. You don't you have a sense of decorum. And when they give you you don't chew you dare not chew you put it in your mouth and take the juice with all piety and then when it sinks down you go back to your seat and bend down what even if you are not praying just bend down for a while i saw elders doing it i, I still don't know why you bend down then after five minutes you stand up then while they are giving others you just hold your bible and you do something spiritual and Satan joins us at the communion table. He comes with his hands. The flesh profited nothing. It is the spirit that gives life. But when you do this with revelation, instantly you will see diseases go. Instantly. There are many of you that see people accuse you in your dreams. They are only accusing you because Satan will only accuse on a legal basis. In the realm of the spirit, everything is done legally. Tonight, the blood speaks mercy. Tonight, the blood speaks grace. Tonight, the blood and the bread speaks unity. There is a common union in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have been called out of every tribe. Many of you will find out that demonic manipulations over your life will instantly cease. All the people that come to you in dreams and say you want to leave us yes you are leaving them tonight because you cannot be joined to two people the bible says a wife shall leave her father and mother with the husband are you listening to me you are about to be joined to your real bridegroom are you listening to me if it is true that the church is the bride of christ that common union is enacted by the bread and by the cup rise up on your feet Go ahead and begin to pray. The accuser of the brethren is fallen. Pray in the spirit. The communion is very important. Because Jesus died. Satan can no longer accuse me. No. My past is washed in the blood. There is grace for me. To live the resurrected life. The life of victory. The life above sin. The life of power. The life of grace. The life of glory. Go ahead and prophesy. Declare all the things that you are. On account of what Christ has done. Prophesy. I am the righteousness of God. In Christ Jesus. Call your name. Call your name. Say I am holy. I am righteous in the name of Jesus I am a new creation there is no past therefore no accusation I am the righteousness I can approach the father without a sense of guilt without a sense of fear without a sense of condemnation pray sin cannot have dominion over my body pray challenge everything that is not of God Bible says bring in every thought to the obedience of Christ hallelujah hallelujah Please, can we have um, some of the ministers just come and help us?
this is a very spiritual moment right now i need you to do this with revelation hallelujah okay um we need welfare where are the welfare ladies so you can help them to hold it while they distribute it hallelujah please just pass it someone do it inside and outside everybody just hold it hallelujah okay yes you can pick this someone else can pick this can you come and help pastor williams hold it while he serves it his wife help them hold it please bring more hallelujah okay some of you stay outside let's have one or two ministers please one or two ministers andy please help us hallelujah go ahead and pray in the spirit please go ahead and distribute it round go ahead and distribute it round just pick a piece and hold it he conquered death he conquered sickness if the word of god is true then your life will step into a new phase Communion, come on, union, come on, union, come on, union. Come on, union. Shake up. Ba, 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 ba. Come on, pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. The power of the body and the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, we are going to take the communion. Hallelujah. Let me read a scripture. You don't need to, you may not be able to hold something but let me read a scripture first corinthians chapter 10 i feel the strong presence of the holy spirit in this place listen first corinthians chapter 10 listen to me for i have received of the lord that which also i delivered unto you that the lord jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you he said my body is broken for you for your healing for your strength for your health he said do this in remembrance of me after the same manner also 25 he took the cup when he had souped saying this cup is the new testament in my blood this do ye often as ye drink it in remembrance of me listen it says this it says verse 29 for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh judgment to himself not discerning the lord's body verse 30 it says for this cause many are weak many are sick and many do sleep what does that tell you the communion is an antidote against weakness listen the bible says if you take it unworthily you will get the opposite of what should happen to you when you take the communion it says it brings strength it brings health it brings longevity it says many are weak many are sick and many do sleep as you take the communion I believe God that there will be change of genotypes miracles hallelujah I know there's a young man you spoke to me on phone you said you've been suffering where is that person you spoke to me as you take that communion are you listening to me the, the trace of typhoid will die and go once and for all I follow me now those streaming online as many families that can connect with us just get anything that can be gotten father in the name that is above all names you gave us an ordinance 
that reminds us of our oneness with you as a church the body of Christ and Lord on this Easter Friday prophetically as a church we stand with revelation and understanding and Lord we declare that as we take of your bread and as we take of the cup in the realm of the spirit we announce our common union our oneness our victory let it cause healing let it cause deliverance let it cause impartation let the strength of sin be broken let weakness go let curses go let every mental disorder leave let me tell you many of you will experience the power and the fire of the spirit as soon as you take this communion hallelujah worshipers as soon as we take it as soon as you take your, the communion just begin to pray in the spirit hallelujah praise the lord the lord shows me the vision of a cross and every time the lord shows the cross is the place of victory is the place of the exchange hallelujah father bless this cup bless this bread in the name of jesus go ahead and take it take it with faith and begin to the power of god i'm telling you i sense the strong presence of god begin to pray in the spirit Rapesa suze patada mara. Rababa kabasha. Come on union with Christ. Pray and say every sickness goes. Command every sickness to go. Command every weakness to go by the power of the Holy Ghost. Command limitations to go. In the name of Jesus, break free from covenant, break free from limitation. Come on, pray. No accusation, no accusation, no accusation. The power of God is coming upon you. No accusation. No paparoscopy. Rekotoske preskeya. Reketosia. Reba ba 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 ba. La posko proske preskeya. The power of the blood. The power of the blood speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Le poroso tople gele bele bele. Rekete te pokosome. Man prosko bosha. Inside and outside. Break free from sickness. Go ahead and pray. No accusation. Satan, no accusation. The accuser that accuses the brethren day and night, we challenge you in the name of Jesus. We overcame them by the blood of the Lamb. 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 Hallelujah. Please let me have the cup. I've not taken one for myself.
pray. My past is gone. My past is gone. No accusation. No accusation. Declare. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Declare and say, because I am one with Christ, no sickness, no death, no failure, no poverty. Come on, enforce it by the power of prayer. No more sickness. No more sickness. In the name of Jesus, I am one with Christ. I suffered with him. And today I'm alive with him. No more sickness. No more death. Untimely death. I come against you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Hallelujah. The Bible says in John 15 that you are in the vine. That means you should bear fruits. Are you listening to me? Everything that represents delay, stagnation, and unfruitfulness. You're going to pray and say, I am one with Christ. I am one with Christ. Prophesy to yourself. Say, I'm moving forward. I'm moving forward. I see no limits. My limits are the limits of Jesus. No limits. No boundaries. No limits. In the name of Jesus. No boundaries. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Everything that is found in Christ is yours by this union. No, no. It's the truth. So what do you find in Christ? And Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, in favor. That means I'm favored. That means I'm wise. Hallelujah. The spirit of creativity that came upon Bezalel was upon Jesus. That means I'm creating. No limits. Jesus was never sick. No demon woke Jesus in his sleep. Hallelujah. Listen. Say after me in the name of Jesus. By the power of the communion. I declare. That I am one with Christ. I am one with his spirit. One with him in victory. I enjoy his health. I enjoy his favor. I enjoy his blessings. I enjoy advancement. I enjoy increase. I refuse sickness. I refuse death. I refuse weakness. I refuse oppression. I am the head and not the tail. I am above Satan. I'm above demons. I'm above principalities. They cannot do me anything because I am in Christ. No man can accuse me for my past is washed in the blood. Listen, when you have this mindset, you will not walk like a beggar again in life. You will walk with authority. You will walk with audacity. I belong to the family of the king. 
when your lecturer accuses you you just feel sorry for him hallelujah as you celebrate Easter some of you will be traveling when you know you are in Christ always picture him walking with you don't expect accident hallelujah many of you have not gone home now because yeah today is Friday let me hold on also, no Satan is supposed to be afraid of you if with all Jesus has done Satan is not afraid of you something is wrong with you because Satan was afraid of Jesus Christ I have no apology for demons and Satan and devils I can't imagine myself sleeping and a demon comes to wake me I work so hard God knows when I sleep I, I lie down we all sleep when it's time to stay awake we stay awake when the devil comes to wake me I'll ask him to go outside and stand there you are in Christ the angels of God are protecting you again study scriptures appropriate it in your life don't just be churchy about it let it become your present day reality I've said it no man can kill me I'm telling you I'm not bragging it's the truth if you know what I've been through in this life you will know why I'm saying what I'm saying in my world I see victory I really do I really do in my world I see the life and the power of God in my world I see Christ glorified in my world I see lives being changed in my world I see the the powers of darkness continually dislodged in my life I see longevity listen very carefully in my life I see prosperity in my life I see an opportunity to serve the purposes of God with my life forever in my life I see continuous triumph I have taken out time by the word of God and by the spirit to make that understanding become a stronghold in my mind are we together in my mind I see power and anointing someone someone once asked me and said apostle is it that god tells you he's going to move in a meeting what gives you confidence and i said god me and history <laughs> history history is the basis for mastery i don't try to have faith in god when he will move we've left that level i know i trust him it's a realm of koinonia oneness certainty certainty let me show you something Luke chapter 1. Please give it to us. Luke chapter 1. We'll read the first three or four verses. Look up, please. For as much as many have taken in hand to set in order the declaration of those things which are mostly secured, believe, are most surely believed among us. Verse 2. Even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses, listen, and ministers of the word. Verse 3 it seemed good having had what perfect understanding of all things from the very first to write unto thee in order most excellent theophilus what is the purpose verse 4 that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed they are not cunningly vice fables. The goal of writing this to you is that I was an eyewitness to these things. And I want to write to you so that I solidify and clean up any gray areas that might make you doubt the certainty of what you have received. This is Dr. Luke writing to Theophilus. And telling him what is going on that means so that when you stand to declare a thing you are not hoping in the secret you are right the certainty 
of these things when you say god lifts and god can change lives as a preacher you are you are a funny preacher if you don't believe it how then does the power flow power does not just flow through your hands it flows through your understanding it's very important you you know this are you getting what i'm saying the certainty of those things so you must walk on your mind philippians chapter 2 same philippians notice that paul paul seemed to draw it in this church in philippi this issue of mindset chapter 2 and verse 5 he now encourages the saints let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus he's teaching here that for you to establish victory in your life you must allow the mind to be in you there was an understanding that jesus had there was a belief system that jesus had any trouble is frustrated when your mind does not partner with it every victory that comes from christ is also frustrated when you do not have a mindset requirement poverty depends on a mindset to stay infirmity depends on a mindset to stay causes and yokes and all kinds of things depend on a mindset to stay i think it was a preacher one time i don't know where i heard this um but there was a preacher one time who um spoke about is it the 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 elephant that is used in a circus how that they would chain the elephant or something like that and then it was used to a rope being tied and it was limited and that because of the it, it was already used to it one time they even removed the rope and the elephant would not go past that because it, the rope has been tied in his mind the worst way to bind people is to bind them in their minds when i bind you in your mind i can lose your hands you are in a bigger prison are we together so you must learn to stand in faith with god and believe with him some of you may have never received properly the miracle service because you are hoping that you will come and watch others get blessed would you leave such a distance to just come and clap for others there is a level of insistence the woman with the issue of blood said if i may but touch the hem of his garment she kept rehearsing before the arrival of jesus blind Bartim, you said all of you have eyes i have an eye too but i can't see and if jesus is passing around let me just hear the sound of jesus and i will cry thou son of david have mercy on me there is a level of insistence that will force darkness to go are we together tonight so i want you to believe listen let me tell you this it is powerful when the power of god flows in and to and through a mindset that has been so constructed you will see the potentials of the life of god we have many destructive belief systems that continue to short circuit the power of god you can pray for a lady like this for instance in the name of jesus may god give you a great life partner but she already has a destructive mindset that will never even allow the life partner see her her mindset has become darkness a depraved selfish unspiritual mind full of low esteem which god's son will see that kind of that kind of um, scenario and be glad to come and marry and there are men with self-centered self-destructive attitudes so listen you have a responsibility and this is the part of the gospel that i think we must balance in church the gospel that continues to say god is exclusively responsible he is responsible for betting the victory but you are responsible for partnering for the transfer and the manifestation to happen in your life it is true and when there was no more vessel the oil stopped the vessel in this case can be your mindset the vessel in this case can be your understanding is god speaking to us tonight someone can be here and you can make up your mind and say lord from january till october i thank you but i've not seen the prophetic word you've given me i'm insisting 
that this night is not only my night of reception it's my night of recovery and that by next miracle service i'm only coming to testify and clap for others i i name today as the day of my salvation hallelujah yes god is able the bible says it now unto him ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 who is able to do exceeding abundantly are far above all we ask or think not ask or sing ask or think and then it says according to the power not lives in him the power allowed to walk in us the power allowed to walk in us god's power is like a dam the one allowed to walk in you is like the the opening of the tap you can open a tap so small that it brings water drop by drop you have short circuited the potential of the dam the dam is misrepresented by the allowance that the tap gives are we together so god wants to bring us to a point where he will move us into dimensions of grace dimensions of victory now thanks be to god now thanks be to god now thanks be to god what does it take for god to change a family listen let me tell you this look up don't get used to pain and don't get used to failure continue to insist until your life reflects christ this is this is where the labor of a believer is in the spirit your insistence until the things that you now see become the things you do not see insistence lord it is not your will for this family to be in poverty begging from hand to mouth anointed but begging anointed but begging anointed but begging every good thing that happens in the family you receive it with fear because you know it will not last and you are right it will not last because it was only received momentarily it was not sustained by a requisite level of mindset that will keep it whatever your mind holds is yours forever truly whatever your mind holds is yours if your mind holds trouble is truly yours if your mind holds victory it is yours are we together so you must insist this night there are all kinds of things god wants to do listen let me tell you this very quickly in a miracle service god does many things a miracle service is not just a healing service a miracle service is a service that allows for the power of god to birth and sustain supernatural solutions everybody say supernatural solutions solutions whose origin and operation is higher than the realm of men it truly is stupid for an individual to sit down and start asking can god change my life in one day can god change my life in two days can god turn my family before november god are we together are you guys done have you fixed it it's not working okay so please Let's work on it as fast as we can. Make up your mind that my life must become an expression of the beauty and the glory of God. Make it a project. It doesn't matter where you are now. Make up your mind that my family must become a reflection of the beauty and the glory of God. As at the time you are speaking, you may not have where to live as at the time you are speaking there's no food even at home now to eat don't worry stand in faith don't fake anything there's no need faking anything because there's no need faking what can be real you've heard me say there is no point faking anointing there is no point faking power in ministry you can stand and say lord as it is right now my church looks like a place where people just stop to drink water because of how powerless it is but lord let something from heaven come upon my church and i stand in faith and i believe with you everybody you pray for is not healed everybody you speak over is not changed but no problem you stand and look at your siblings 
and nobody in that house looks like the future everybody looks like the past stand in faith i refuse to give my the, my mindset as a donation everybody in your family is not married everybody in your family has no children don't partner with the devil they have all donated their mindsets be the last key that will refuse satan and say no way if god is finding hope in this family let my mindset be the gateway that allows god to come in please hear what i tell you not elder sister no child this one no child you two you have been married how long say two and a half years say all of us are the same you have you are the last card that god is depending upon to become the doorway for his power to come and now the devil is tricking you through frustration to donate your mindset if everybody in your family is failing you can stand and say lord find one doorway that can allow you remember there is no miracle until there is at least five loaf and two fish you have to give god something the five loaf will allow other loaves come hallelujah i never think failure i truly mean it i'm not just talking i never think defeat i believe i'm victorious i live in the consciousness of the jealousy of god over my life it's true i have loved thee with an everlasting love and i have drawn you with my loving kindness it's not just scripture to me it is life it is god revealing his intent to me this ministry will never go down it will continue to be from glory to glory it's true no 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 I, i'm being as honest and modest with you as as possible because retrogression has an explanation you can explain why things deplete you can explain why things retrogress and you can explain why things will remain afloat regardless of what happens hallelujah you are here tonight in this place in the presence of god you are here tonight many of you have traveled from several nations some of you have traveled from different places to come please hear me my brothers and my sisters the first miracle that god is doing tonight is calling your attention to the partnership that your thought life would have been creating with the devil we call all kinds of nonsense does it look like god if you were god is that how you will walk are we together now you must insist and say no this is not the character of god this is not the best of god god cannot bring 11 children to be scrounging from hand to mouth and the only employed person in that family is earning fifteen thousand. god is not wicked something is wrong the moment you call darkness darkness then light can fight it when it has to do with dealing with issues don't be ashamed don't be afraid to stand on god's side are we together so a miracle service allows the multifaceted dimensions of god's power to find expression some of you are here trusting god to break and crack down yokes of infirmity once and for all but do you believe do you agree with god apostle i'm ss this thing will never change it will be unto you according to your faith apostle i know i'm just here no problem they will lay hands on me but that that persuasion is not yet there apostle i believe god will prosper me but in your mind you are looking at that class you are looking at um the fact that your only uncle that had access to bail all of you out died last year and you say it has finished no apostle there have been too much delay in my life by now i should be at this level at this level but restoration is possible let your mind open that door see when you know who god is you don't, there is no fear and regret in your life because the bible says for we know the rest don't know but we who are in the kingdom and are aware of the systems of advantage provided for by god in christ we know that in a believer's life there is nothing that is really a disadvantage it's true if you were employed as a graduate in 2000 by now you most likely with diligence and service minus corruption and wickedness you probably would be a director by now are we together yes 
and now you've not even gotten a job so if you get a job now most likely you are over age already they will not employ you and so you can sit down and say this thing self i'm dead is finished it's over because you have given god you have told god how to move in your life and not allowed him move how he wants to move god if it's must you move this way and god says i want to do more than you can imagine and he will have to make do with the allowance that your mindset allows him but someone can say lord i'm tired of allowing you to pass through my life only through salary thank you for salary but el shaddai where are you answer my family That is the day you will see what will happen one day and it will look to you like a dream. Someone will call you and say, the Lord instructed me to transfer 30 million to this family. You say, please tell EFCC before you talk to me. Let, let's just be sure you are genuine. And they say, God instructed me and I'm obedient. Then you will now know that the testimony of others are not a lie. Pain can make you think everyone is lying. Did God really step in like that? Did God really anoint you like that? hallelujah expect god to step into your family expect god to step into your life expect god to put favor upon you the reason why people succeed in this life the favor of god is true expect it life by default and without the assistance of god is impossible to live it's not hard it's impossible you will never be able to walk in the dignity of kingdom integrity and live life as it should be unassisted by god no so he interjects your life with different systems of advantage like mercy like favor like speed like restoration all these things are divine forces that work together to make your life become what the word of god says should become so a woman here for instance who has been barren say for six seven years now if god gives you one child that's good news but that's progress not restoration because you will still have to wait three years get pregnant again wait three years get pregnant you must add 12 years to have the four children so god gives you triplets in nine months now that one is no longer progress that's restoration he has brought nine years spacing in nine months are we together god calculates your salary like arias and brings it through favor in one transfer god shifts you to a level of anointing that you should have walked in had it been your uncle allowed you to be diligent attending church serving in the house of god there are certain levels in the spirit you would have walked in right now but because he stopped you and clamped you down and things didn't look like they were working many things just went down in your life and because of that watch this because of that you got grounded and could not know god fast and god can lead you to an uncommon mentorship an uncommon anointing in six months you will receive a grace that is 15 years old <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> Jacob collected Esau's birthright. He didn't know that Esau was supposed to suffer seven years. When he collected his birthright, Esau's own plus, his own, he served 14 years. It's not about exchanging of women, it's destiny playing out. Their family had delay. I hope you know from Abraham, it was a challenge so both of the sons individually whether they was collecting birthright or not they would have paid their seven years watch this but jacob collected Esau. it only played out using women but it still played out that means you can collect someone's speed too you see that it's true sit down please sit down you can come with a load that is supposed to be 10 years according to the normal sequence of occurrence based on the allowance your family gives and you come under the influence of a covenant that forces your life to look like the grace upon that territory it's true find a way of believing what i'm saying i've shown you luke chapter one to tell you the certainty of these things 
it is not those who like you that bless you alone it's those who are directed for everybody to like you do you know how long it takes to like a man sometimes you just need to hear god and obey fast your life requires speed hallelujah there are times because of what god wants to do in your life when he finds out that four people need to be blessed to reach you whether they are praying or not he will hurry them quickly because they are delaying you he will hurry them for your sake when you come for a meeting like this be conscious of four things number one be conscious of every prophetic word that comes relating to your issues of concern be conscious of it when these words come don't think they are just empty speakings the carnal man cannot discern the things of god the word of god is like a tray you have to receive the tray before you receive what is on it are we together now the word of god is a tray it carries miracles carries deliverance carries healings so when you receive the word the engrafted word you now take what is in it be conscious of the prophetic word number two be conscious of the covenant covenant is a very deep spiritual word many people just shout covenant around but they don't even know what it means listen a covenant is a system that commits god and causes him to vow to ensure that a person or an institution continues to receive certain predictable outcomes it's a covenant there is the covenant of answered prayer there is the covenant of god's presence there is a covenant of results every man that god truly calls and every ministry that god truly ordains there are underlying spiritual covenants the platform upon which god put his vow and his integrity that has touching this and this i will make happen it's true also be conscious of the graces you see that the graces that are available within that territory you cannot receive a man's covenant you can only partake of it but you can receive graces you are a pastor you come and your church is grounded you only have 50 members during your annual thanksgiving thank god for that but something is wrong god is a god of increase you can come with hearts open to receive the grace how about hardship things not working well how about your spiritual growth you are at the same level for five years the knowledge of scripture zero health of your prayer life zero you are a man of god and nobody is placing a demand on the grace of god that you have it will frustrate you eventually but there are graces every possibility in the kingdom is governed by an operation of grace when that grace comes upon your life your result shows thou anointest my head with oil the result shows through my cup he does not anoint your cup he anoints your head your cup proves what is on your head are we together now so this is very important thank you and you have to understand the way this works we are going to pray shortly and i need you to know how this works i want you to receive be conscious of the graces not some of you may not need may not need a miracle like miracle from sickness or whatever but understand that when you come it's like an exchange of graces listen the bible says give us please second corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8 please give it to us quickly second corinthians 9 and verse 8 praise the lord read with me please koinonia ready one to read stop 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 god is able to make all grace let me explain that to you please all of you come stand anywhere you want to stand just stand anywhere scatter yourself around don't come close to me just stand watch this call these guys graces the grace for prosperity the grace for favor the grace for speed the grace for spiritual fire the grace for influence watch this access to the hearts of men this is you this is your destiny and the bible says the way we advance is that we need to be in touch with all graces not some 
I can have the grace for prosperity and I'm rich, but I suffer, but I succeed. You are rich, but no man helps you because you don't have favor. You only have prosperity. The proof of favor is not money. It's the loyalty of men. If you do not have access to the hearts of men, you don't have favor. You may have resources. So this guy has prosperity. So he will labor, wake up in the morning, sleep late in the night, eat the bread of sorrow, mix it with hard work, and eventually prosper. But as far as spiritual fire is concerned, the grace that plants in a man, the hunger and the passion for the things of God is not in him. So that grace is not there. He has some, but not all. And the part, the grace dimension he does not have, the deficiency of it will show in his life. He is getting richer, but not as his soul prospers. This is the grace he needs. When you pray and intercede for this man now, God will answer your prayer by channeling him to a ministry or a man of God that has this dimension. So that in addition, it will be added to him. Are we together now? Now, listen very carefully, please. Look up, everybody. So God is, one of the things that happens here is that the spirit of God continues to move like a wind and he scans your life. Which grace do you need in this season that you do not yet have? This is one of the biggest miracles that happens in a miracle service. Most people do not know. You sit under this atmosphere and there is an updating. It's like a software. God finds out that this level you are entering into, there are at least 21 graces. But as it is, there are only four. So while the meeting, worship is going, prayer is going, there is an upgrade that grace so here's what the bible says god is able to make hold my hands so you come for koinonia miracle service dry nothing is on your head and nothing is around your life too because what is around you is a is a report card telling what is on you are we together now you obtain the grace that makes for abundance for the sake and the grace for wealth that works in this ministry forces you to love God while you are wealthy. Yeah. If you receive a grace that makes you wealthy and as you are rising in wealth, you are leaving God. That anointing did not come from this ministry. The grace for this ministry has been, it has been edited to a covenant to ensure that as men rise, their hearts also rise for God. Not the kind of nonsense money that makes you leave God. You don't honor anything that has to do with God again. No, it is as you prosper, even as your soul prospers. It's Babylon that gives wealth that prospers you and diminishes your soul. Watch this. So you receive this grace. And then the Holy Spirit finds out. Grace for what? Favor. Come. Watch this. Praise and worship. You got this one during praise and worship. You didn't even know why you felt like falling. You just thought that, ah, the song was so nice. Something had landed on your head. Are we together now? This is speed. Hold me now, my dear. Watch this. This is what is happening in Koinonia. You are sitting down, but you just know that there is a weight. That glory, something is coming on you. You can't tell. You are not even falling. You are not shouting. You will look at someone shouting and feel bad and feel like I, I wish I'm the person falling. Whereas the Holy Ghost is doing very serious things and then access to the hearts of men. This is your package for miracle service. Now you receive this. Watch this. We now share the grace. Watch this. Watch this. Remember you traveled from another nation. The UK, US, Kenya, wherever. And then you just came. And at the end of the service, Satan can even fool you. You are from Kenya. Ah, oh, I see. Please sit down, madam. I see how it's a Kenyan. Uh, God bless you. Now watch this. You can receive this. And while you receive it, they will share the grace. And you will still feel like nothing came on you. But you see, the exam is not marked in church. Go out. listen please koinonia understand what i teach you and god is able you came for a meeting and you carried this in two days someone who forgot you no listen he does not just remember i've taught you this last week a book is open in the realm of the spirit by reason of the grace that you carry watch this in one week 
a strange grace for illumination you think hold on you think it's the spirit of revelation it's not revelation it's speed it's just that speed demands revelation there are graces when you carry they call others too so that they will work well in your life and god is able god is able god is able there are people because of the graces you carry you will sustain the grace to fast for three days for one week remember that was a condition god gave you to allow your spirit allow him do certain things but the fortitude to fast that long was not there so the grace comes and while you wait upon the lord 10 years immediately is released within one month listen if all you see is just physical healings and deliverances you are not seeing well the major part of what calls listen one of the major reasons why god sends people from other nations and other places to this place is number one to be able to stand by the grace he has provided for to solve their problems but more than that to expose you to ancient mantles these are graces that were there by covenant listen there is nothing i carry that is as old as me everything i carry is older than me by far we are only stewards the grace predates us it's a relay we are running others ran it and god added on it and gave us to hold it for a generation To know the certainty of the things whereof you have been instructed please hear me if you believe what i share with you tonight you will marvel and you will wonder you can choose tonight to agree with god that every challenge except it does not have a name that in this place this night god will bring it down we are going to have like 10 minutes of serious prayer now listen please during that time of prayer forget about who is by your left and right forget about me just stay with god and pray passionately for the next 10 minutes lord i came for an encounter i came to receive healing i came to receive deliverance but i came to also attach myself to covenants i came by the spirit to receive graces outside inside online lift your voice and pray be restoration please bring them out quickly 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 let's save time please in the break take it to Sheila Qatar restoration now I speak it by the spirit the power of God is still coming on people recover recover by the spirit recover I stretch my hands recover by the power of prophecy recover Recover years lost. Recover opportunities. E Paris ke barashanda la katariata. Recover in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and declare God is bringing recovery. Let me tell you, you will marvel and wonder that the things you thought has left you, you are about to find it waiting for you in your tomorrow. I speak to you, may that grace come upon you now again. Recovery. Recovery, recovery, Shamana Katabadakata, restoration. I want to take authority over the spirit of delay. I'm seeing many people, your feet is chained in the spirit. You want to make progress, but you cannot make progress. Fire is falling from heaven now. I decree and declare inside, outside, all the overflows, anyone under the sound of my voice who is under the influence of the spirit of delay at the count of three may fire from heaven fall upon those chains one two three i break those chains now be free now from delay be free now 
Be free now. Be free now. I will hasten my word to perform it. I will not just perform it. I will give speed to my word. The word is quick and powerful. I declare again, any family here, any individual under the yoke of delay, I speak to you by the spirit. That yoke is broken now. That yoke is broken now. Broken by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Now I want to pray. Please listen. I have prayed this prayer. And for those of you who have missed it in time past. May God grant you the grace to receive it now. Listen. Truly speaking. There is a grace for speed. Please hear me. A man's lifetime cannot allow the fullness of the purposes of God to be birthed. Some of you gave your life to Christ late already in life. It's not enough to rebuke delay. You must obtain the grace for speed. And watch this. I'm about to pray for people now. And that anointing is coming on people. As usual, you'll find people running by the Spirit. But I need to release that anointing. Father, I stand under heaven in this miracle service. There are people who have traveled from several nations and several territories at the count of three for you and for your family. That dimension of speed where 10 years can be put in one year. I declare right now, let it come upon you. One, two, three. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Speed. Parush Kabarakata. Speed. Career speed. I give speed to your life. Speed to ministry. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Speed. Hello, Madonna. Hallelujah. Mommy. Please look at me, ma. Don't be embarrassed. I don't know you, but I'm seeing strong witchcraft over your family. Where are you coming from, madam? Madam, I'm looking at you. I'm seeing River State. Where are you from? States. Huh? States. River State. Yes, sir. The Lord says I should tell you that from this night, things will change in your life. She's your mother. Help that woman, please. I'm looking at the Lord in the spirit. I'm putting my hand inside a river. And I'm bringing something out. And the Lord says the destiny of this family. In the name of Jesus. That's the daughter. I command by the spirit. Every planting that is not of the Lord. I overturn and I uproot now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Who is Naomi? I'm hearing a name, Naomi. We have to hurry up. I want to pray for the sick. Naomi. Hello, Kim Madonna. The Naomi I'm talking about is outside. Where are you coming from? Come, stand. Your name is not Naomi. Is your name Naomi? What's your name? Come, stand. Where are you coming from, my dear? UK. From where? UK. I want to pray for you. Your name is Naomi. Come and stand. We have to hurry up. Hold on. I cancel CS. I, Madam, look at me. I stretch my hands now. I cancel CS by the spirit of the living God and I decree and declare like the Hebrew women you will give birth in the name of Jesus Christ I'm saying it again I correct what I'm seeing in the name of Jesus this is what doctors say baby is breached in the name of Jesus by the anointing of the Holy Ghost I correct it now may you give birth normally like the Hebrew women 
in Jesus name let me pray are you married you are backing a baby where is the baby I'm looking at you in a vision that's why I'm saying how can this you know I'm saying you came to Koinonia you are backing a baby outside this is the vision I'm you are not getting what I'm saying is this you were backing this baby when I mentioned your case yes. Huh? Yes, were you backing a baby yes, that's why I'm saying are you married because you look too small to be a married woman this is the real person I want to pray for bring this little baby God is I don't know whose child is this your child but God this lady you see is going to be a mighty vessel in the hand of God she looks like a little girl in the name of Jesus what's her name Nicole. Nicole she may not know what we are doing but we stand in the presence of the people of God we anoint this lady may she become a Deborah to her generation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ my dear let me pray for you where are you from Kogi State I want to pray for you huh. Immediately she mentioned Kogi State. I saw what I used to see now. Now I'm seeing the map of Nigeria. And I'm seeing the power of God going to Kogi State. Kogi State. I'm praying now. It's a sign and wonder. Every time I see that, if you are from that locality, the power of God comes on you immediately. In the name of Jesus, I command witchcraft associated with that territory. Shamala Sakatabarikatosh. Embrekete Bakutasia. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Hallelujah. Who is Magdalene? Magdalene, my dear, come in the name of Jesus Christ. I anoint you. There is grace. You look young, but you are going to be a mother to men. This is what I'm saying. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord anoint you and make it so. My dear, I rebuke the hand of witchcraft now. Release her. I'm seeing chains on you. I declare by the Spirit, release this lady now. I'm about to minister deliverance shortly. Release her now. In the name of Jesus, please bring someone in overflow too now. A lady, the power of God is coming upon that lady. Now, as I speak, overflow too. Mighty fire of God is coming. Please bring her quickly. We have to save time. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. Come, my dear. The grace that will want to make married men disturb you, look at me. I come against that spirit now. Not only you. There are five other people I'm seeing. I don't know where they are, but in Jesus' name, there is a, like, like, a, like, an, almost like an evil anointing that makes only married people to look for you. In the name of Jesus, by the God of heaven, I lift that negative thing off your life now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. I hear the name Magdalene. I don't know if... Magdalene, I want to pray very quickly. We have to pray for the sick. You are the covenant keeping God. you can Jesus! I decree and declare by the spirit of the living God I'm seeing your feet in mud in the name of Jesus I lift you out of this tragedy by the power of the Holy Spirit and I speak to this lady 
I'm seeing this lady, but all I'm seeing is snakes completely. I declare be free now by the spirit of the living God. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Be free right now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Let me pray for you, my dear. Grace for you. The favor that is on your life, I command it to start speaking. It will not only be a name that is on you. It will speak right now in Jesus' name. Your sister, your name is Magdalene. Come, in the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord bless you. Look at me. The Lord is taking away shame and reproach from your life. These two things. Shame and reproach. Shame and reproach. Shame and reproach. Please stand up. I speak to you by the God of heaven. The month of November, a big miracle is coming to your life. A big miracle. I lay my hands upon you and I declare in the name of Jesus, be free right now. Why is this girl here? This Magdalene? come my dear I pray for you place your hand on your head I declare oh God let this chain be taken now I'm seeing a chain on this girl's head be removed now be removed this like the devil wanting to just bring this lady under captivity I remove it right now in the name of Jesus Christ somebody lay your hands on her so anybody just touch her release her now by the spirit of God there's no place for you take everything that belongs to her restore it and go now now please listen I want to minister deliverance please believe it you may not know the woman from Kenya Come, it's time for God to change your life. Please stand up. When did you come here? Uh, yesterday. Yesterday, yes. you came here. God is about to turn your life around. Amen. Glory. You are still coming, and you are coming with four people the next time you are coming. Amen. Thank you. Jesus. Madam, what do you do? What do you do? I'm a commissioner for human rights. Commissioner for human rights yes. in Nairobi. Yes. In, in two weeks, I'm going to be in your nation. I would like to see you, Amen. your nation. There is a reason why I'm talking. I'm not seeing you alone. I'm seeing four other people yes. that the Lord wants me to pray for. Amen. But I want to pray for you, madam, because I don't know if you believe it or not, you have a political destiny. As you are like this, looking at me, you have a political destiny in Kenya. And God, by his spirit, is going to make this happen. But another thing is, there is also the call of God upon your life. You are a woman that loves God. There is, is starting like an intercessory grace and a prophetic grace. But you will get to a point where among the graces God will give you is the grace to pray for barren women. Notice this grace. God is going to bring this grace upon you. God, I'm also seeing you build a charity foundation. There is going to be a mighty humanitarian foundation that I see you build. I'm seeing foodstuff and I'm seeing different things. First, it will have to do with young girls, people who have been abused and so on. But I see it not only that, I see women too. Women, God is going to increase your influence. I lay my hands upon you and I declare by the spirit, carry this grace. Go to Kenya with it, go and excel. I command the two lift gates of Nairobi and the entire Kenya to be open for you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, go with this anointing, go and prosper. May the Lord multiply your political career and may the Lord prepare you for the mighty ministerial assignment he has for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. An angel of the Lord is standing here. Someone will shout here under a strong anointing. I just saw that grace. I don't know. First, I think until the shout happens, I know why God, just from here right to the back, there is an anointing. I just saw a, a very mighty manifestation of the power of God here. Now, listen. Whether you know it or not, if there is anything influencing your, your destiny that is not of the Christ, it's about to give way right now. 
Hallelujah. At the count of three, hear me. Whether you are inside, outside, or following online, I want you to shout that name Jesus with understanding. It's not just a chant. My Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower, not a weak tower. The righteous run it to it and they are saved. I want to pray for you. I know you've shouted in other months, but great deliverance, great deliverance is about to come your way. Father, I pray that every spirit in this place that does not name the name of the Christ, that is sitting on the destinies of men and women, manipulating their results, I stand and call upon the God of Jeshurun, the one that rides upon the wind, and I declare, let there be deliverance. At the count of three, shout that name, Jesus. One, two, three. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Please bring them out. Be free now. Overflow one. Overflow two. Overflow three. All the extension online. I declare, be free now from ancestry be free from foundation be free from witchcraft bring them out operations of darkness i'm seeing a womb like the drawing of a woman's womb and i'm seeing it close it doesn't just mean physical barrenness it means a spirit that is closing the door of results many people cannot get results but right now that door is about to open and i stand by the god of heaven by the fire of the holy ghost everyone's destiny that has been closed so that it will not find manifestation at the count of three let it be open one two three be open now be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now.
the Lord is placing, listen please, the Lord is placing a very strange grace for finances. Listen to me. Please, I want you to believe it. There is a grace for finances and it's coming on many people. I'm not asking you what you are doing. I'm not asking you what you know. I'm telling you what God is doing. I stand by the God of heaven and I declare, Father, the men and women that must enter into this dimension, as you are showing me at the count of three, may that grace rest upon you. One, two, three. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. A strength grace for abundance. Receive supplies. Let things work in a way that will surprise you. I command things to work in a way that will marvel you. mighty God a few minutes we are going to pray for the sick now now please listen I'm only going to do this for this overflow and overflow one that's not to mean I'm neglecting the remaining it's just a revelation that God is giving me there are two angels standing by my left and my right and every time I see this God wants me to move listen hear me except God is not God when I pass any road where you are anything that does not name the name of the Christ and any dimension that is not of God in your life it must give way now I only do this for this and overflow one afterwards we are going to pray for the sick please I want you to just believe I don't know why God does these things but I want you to believe that he is mighty and that he will glorify himself father in the name of Jesus Christ glorify yourself change everything that needs to be changed many of you will be receiving impartations that will shift you to dimensions I want you to believe it I will pray not everywhere but there are a few people I'm seeing this happen by the Spirit I shift you in the Spirit every limitation that does not name the name of Christ I'm praying mantles anointings by the Spirit coming on people right now let that presence of God shift you to dimension in the name of Jesus dimension I'm seeing a chain around here I break that chain now I'm seeing a chain around here let that chain be broken now let that chain be broken now let that chain be broken now break now break now break now Chains be broken now in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, God is turning your life around. Where are you coming from? Kaduna State. In the name of Jesus. Break now. In the name of Jesus. Be free now from everything that is not of God free now something is breaking here something is breaking here something is breaking here Parusha I break it now 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 by the spirit of the living God I break it now mama I break it now I break it now Somebody, I'm 
sensing an evil spirit just around here. I come against you now. I take authority over that influence. You must go now. Go now. Go now. Go now. Go now. Overflow one, lift your voice and pray in the spirit. Harusa Sigadesh. Now listen. Please be your brother's keeper. You don't have to touch me. Please be your brother's keeper so you don't enjoy yourself. But as I pass here, anything that is not of God is about to give way right now. Thank you, Jesus. Go now. Let it go now. Let it go now. Let it go now. All times, I come against you now. In Release them now, release them now, release them now, release them now. I'm still what looks like an altar right here. Release them now in the name of Jesus. Harusa Sikete, be free now, be free now, be free now, be free now. The spirit of delay right here is breaking, breaking over someone's family. Be broken now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, be broken now. Be broken now. Beauty and glory to your life. In the name of Jesus. Now watch this. Listen. Hold on, please. Hold on, please. I'm standing here and I'm seeing who is Rebecca. Rebecca. They call you Becky. Rebecca. Just not inside. Here you are. What's your name? Rebecca. Don't worry, it's okay. What's your name? Don't just come out if in the name of Jesus Christ, come. I end oppression now over your life and your family. Oh, you, my dear, your name is Rebecca. Where are you from? You are from are you from Makodi? Benway State. In the name of Jesus. I keep seeing this spirit every time I pray for people. That thing they call Aleku A L something K U. In the name of Jesus, I cast that spirit by the God of heaven. If there is anyone under the sound of my voice who is a victim of that spirit, you are from that region, I stand by the God of heaven. Let it come to an end now. Help them, please. Let it come to an end now. In the name of Jesus. Hold on, please. Right here. There is a gentle man who will be mightily used by God. I just saw a strong mantle from my head resting on someone. I stretch my hands. Lord, I don't know where they are. Parus kabadu sheleketa. Let that grace come on you now. Strange mantle, prayer fire, word fire, illumination in the spirit. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. I'm standing here and I'm seeing a family with a yoke of marital delay I'm seeing something that looks like an arrow just coming from heaven right now let deliverance come now let it come now I'm still moving the hand of God is coming to people right now thank you Jesus thank you Jesus please you don't have to touch me in the name of Jesus right here financial stagnation comes to an end an anointing is coming on someone for your family financial stagnation let it be over now my dear be free now out now someone here the power of God is coming on that person be free now free from everything that is not of God New dimensions, new dimensions. I'm seeing an anointing here. New dimension. The old story must leave you. That's what God is saying. I'm prophesying to someone here. The old story must leave you. The old is gone so that the new will come. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where is the woman? Wait, hold on, please. I held someone's hand now holding a photo of a sick patient 
Where is she? Come. Who is this? Where is he? He's in China. What's wrong with him? He's depressed now. If I don't pray for him, I'm seeing him inside a coffin. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, let there be deliverance for him now. What's his name? Ibrahim. This is not only something affecting him. This is something that is influencing the entire family. But I stand by the God of heaven and I set you free. In the name of Jesus, be completely free. And I speak to him, Ibrahim, may the power of God touch you and perfect you now and perfect you forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for the sick. My friend, this man looking at me, come. Where are you coming from? Huh? You are from Kogi State. What do you do? Are you a man of God? You came here trusting God for fresh fire. Come. You are about to receive it because I'm seeing you from Kogi State. You, where is your church? Look at me, sir. Where You have a church? You are under a church. Mm. A time will come God will give you your own work. Now God is preparing you. Be faithful. You will go, but now is not the time. You leave now, you will suffer for nothing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't let sincere people come and push you out of the will of God. But surely a time is coming and you will walk in very strange dimensions of the anointing. Father, I lay my hands upon this man. Let his dealings with the spirit progress. In the name of Jesus. Not only an impartation, a dealing that produces real power in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, may that grace rest upon you by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. This lady with green, this lady, you, come. The Lord is about to turn your life around in a way that will surprise you. Two things will happen to you. Number one, I'm seeing restoration. God is saying, I should tell you, he's bringing restoration. Number two, I'm seeing the gift of men. Please do listen to my message. Help them on the gift of men. God is bringing people strangely to lift you. I lay my hands upon you and I pray, may this grace be effectual. Carry that grace right now. And you will start having visions. Visions. God is going to start giving you dreams and he will start giving you visions. In the name of Jesus. This is very strange what I'm seeing. Except that I saw it, I will not say it. Stop running away from the call. You are a man of God's wife. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm saying what does not make sense. Stop running from the call. You are the wife of a man of God, a minister of the gospel. The Lord will bring performance to his word. This thing I tell you is a strange mystery. The way God works. But in the name of Jesus, I place the word of God upon that prophecy. It's time for you to not fight the will of God. It's time for you to relinquish your own will. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray just one prayer point. The Lord is asking me, immediately we do that, we'll pray for the sick and we'll start submitting our request. Where is that young lady that came out with one mama while I was praying for her? There's a young lady that was wearing glasses. I don't, if, if you are here, you are the one. What do you do? You are going to be very wealthy. Come. Are you a lawyer? Huh? This is your mother? Where are you coming from, madam? Okay, you are the reverse woman. This lady you see is going to be extremely wealthy. Because I'm seeing you a lawyer. And you are going to, you, I don't know what area of law you are going to specialize. But I'm seeing you sitting with so many business people. This is a lot of business people. Signing contracts, helping people to process a lot of things. Millions, huh? That's what? That's where she is right now. Doing some things abroad. She's what? That's what she's doing right now, where she works. That's what she's doing now. Right now, where she works. Because I'm seeing God will just cause them to like her. 
it's not every man that is a foolish and a stupid man there are people who are out to genuinely bless yes, sir. and i pray for your daughter and i connect her by the spirit amen in the name of jesus amen. she will find these people amen. and in the name of jesus she will shift her to another dimension amen mama god is saying i should tell you forgive does it make sense to you that's my husband also he's a lawyer but your husband is a lawyer yes that's what was the issue? Nothing is happening. Don't worry, ma. Do you know why you fell under the anointing? You fell on behalf of all the troubles in your... It wasn't just your personal falling alone. There are times that you fall representing all of these troubles. Because this is not what I'm even saying. God is saying I should tell you to forgive. Forgiveness. Now, it doesn't make sense. And God has not given me an interpretation. But let me tell you this. You see, look up. The average person seated here has been hurt by someone. Whether friends, are we together? Uncles, relatives, people you trusted and they betrayed you. Let me tell you something about unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is a terrible spirit. It's one of the master secrets to delay. Unforgiveness. It will keep you in one place forever. You are there angry and annoyed and most of what you'll be angry about is legitimate however you see forgiveness is a type of giving understand this forgiveness is still the, the giving grace that helps men to forgive the only thing with forgiveness is that you give in advance are we together the highest form of forgiveness is tolerance where you know it will happen again and you build a system around it to not hurt you. We live in a society that is so hot conscious. This one hurt me. This one did this. There are too many things that can create offense. The Bible says in nothing should you be offended. It's a choice. Mama, in the name of Jesus, please don't cry. I don't know what it is and why you are crying. But my dear, comfort your mother after the prayer. Eh? In the name of Jesus, what is before you? Is greater than anything that has caused you pain and in the name of Jesus forgive in the name of Jesus forgive I also pray for someone here do you know there are many couples that have not been able to forgive one another in marriages it can last for 10 years 20 years same room same bed but that bitterness especially for the men we don't know that this might be the secret the bible says for dishonoring your wife the consequence is that your heavens will be closed it's not a lie that's why you see men struggle and struggle and simple things become hard because of the propensity for bitterness make up your mind in this miracle service that you will let go and not only forgive but tolerate I wish I can tell you there are some things your loved ones are doing that they will never do again. But they will do it. Every time a door is about to open here, offense comes. It's a choice. I will not be offended. Are we together? Father, we pray for our daddy in the name of Jesus. The kind of miracle that God will do in the life of this man. Let it be so powerful that everybody around will know that this is the doing of the Lord. I decree it and I establish it. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is a gentleman here. We are going to pray goodness. You see how time just runs. There is a gentleman here. You are a member of Mountain of Fire. Where are you? Mountain of Fire. You are a serious brother. Mountain of Fire. Now please. I'm, I'm not just saying you attend. Don't listen to instructions please. Right? MFM. My friend, you are serious. You come from where? MFM Kano. MFM Kano. How about you? MFM Calabar. How about you? Lagos. Lagos. I want to pray. I'm not saying if you are from MFM, just come out like that. There are particular people. It doesn't matter what denomination you are from. Once you are here, huh? this is a universal, this is a master key. It will complement on what every grace and every man and woman of God is doing. But I want to pray for you. My friend, I, I'm, going, I'm first going to pray for you. Where are you from? I'm from Akwa Ibom State. There is serious witchcraft sitting on your destiny. Yes, I hope sir. you are not embarrassed. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, sir. 
you need help you have prayed stand up please you are a prayer warrior you can pray you can do fasting huh? sometimes you just need a grace to help you you hear what I tell you I'm going to pray for you if I don't pray for you I'm seeing the spirit of death start sweeping people in your family like that like play like play until he starts killing people but let me tell you don't despise yourself you need a lot of mentorship but you are going to be a mighty vessel in the hand of God this brother you see is very serious with God huh? very serious with God you just need the right support impartations and a mentorship system that makes for balance in your life hold my hand father what's your name huh? Anthony Tony in the name of Jesus everything that represents witchcraft I join my faith with that of your father and your leader Dr. Daniel Odikoya and I decree in the name of Jesus be free now I decree by the power of the Holy Spirit the spirit of death far from your dwelling in the name of Jesus Christ I want to pray for you who is looking for a job uh -uh, I'm not saying I'm not on employment I'm talking to these guys that I, of course I know that people are trusting God for jobs where did you apply huh Kaduna service. the Lord says I should pray for you that they will give you do I know you applied for a job stand up prophecy is powerful in a moment God can just change things like that my dear let me tell you this it's not even the issue of Kaduna State Civil Service alone huh? God is going to give you unusual influence it will marvel you are we together now hold my hands you believe what i'm telling you yes father confirm your word in a way that will surprise this lady let that rejected stone in the name of jesus become the chief cornerstone receive of that grace in the name of jesus i speak it so i make it so i establish it by the power of prophecy let me pray for you gentlemen i don't know if it's you or someone related to you but there's someone god is giving a job someone looking for a job but i want to pray for you father you called out the gentlemen from MFM Kano and the remaining places. I decree and declare by the God of heaven that everything that represents witchcraft in your life, let it give way now. In the name of Jesus, let it give way now. Even by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord is showing me a lady. I'm not going to ask you to come. God bless you. But I'm lifting up my hand. I'm seeing... You know how you cover a bride when you are about to marry before they remove that thing from her face this is what i'm seeing but that one is not pride of wedding this is evil covering your entire a human being with almost no head huh? and the lord is saying i should pray that that veil be torn i don't know who that person is but right now the power of god is going there there, there are many of you i perceive in the name of jesus that veil that has covered you so that no good thing finds you by the God of heaven and in the name of Jesus the Christ of God I declare that fail torn into pieces now torn into pieces now inside outside online torn into pieces now the last case I attend to and then we we'll begin to pray for the sick nothing ever lasts in your hand this is the problem you are trusting God for in fact is one of your requests nothing many good things continue to happen but they never last if a, if a season of open door comes three four months sometimes men can come into your life or women can come into your life and after two three months for reasons you cannot explain you have never sustained any blessing for up to two years as it comes you will see it sometimes you will go to bed in the night and you will have a dream you may see someone come maybe to molest you or to attempt to have an affair with you this is what i'm seeing the moment that thing happens it will not be up to one month and every good thing goes down but i'm praying right now 
in the name of Jesus whoever belongs to this category every attachment you have with spirits that are not of the Christ that warrant visitations in the night to molest and oppress you and spy into your liberty I declare by the Spirit of God be free now be free now help them please be free now be free now my dear come you come hold my hands it's your it's a new season for you by the anointing of the holy ghost step into a new season i've touched you I saw you climbing a ladder in the spirit. I release you into that dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. We have to hurry up and pray for the sick now. Now please watch this. This lady jumping. Shame and reproach. I call it by his name. And I command it to leave you now. shame and reproach to leave you and let you go in the name of Jesus someone will run by the anointing to me don't stop the person just hold the person this is what I'm seeing by the spirit this is a ministry of signs and wonders why these things I'm not saying to run consciously I'll send you back this is by the anointing please there is order in the house of God order in the church are we together the, the hand of God now as I speak is coming upon you. My soul longs and even thirsts for you. My heart and my flesh cries out for the living God. For the living God. Incline your ears with trembling and tears of yearning to the throne of grace to seek your face I'm burning longing for you I need you I need you I need you I need you, I need you. you. nothing I declare to all of you that came out by the spirit I shift you go forward now go forward now the power that holds you down I take authority over it in the name of Jesus go forward now I release your families to go forward now in the name of Jesus now please hear me our time is gone we have to be fast now listen for those who will be laying hands on you don't think that because it is not joshua selman laying hands on you remember i told you that there is a grace that everyone who is called to serve in this ministry and designated and mandated carries that grace we're about to pray for the sick now now listen please there are three conditions that i will want to minister lay hands on the people myself remember don't tell lies you cannot come to the truth lying are we together don't insist that i just want joshua selman to touch that's not the idea aside from those who are in the main auditorium that i request to come out if you're trusting god for a miracle if you are here and you are suffering from cancer number one number two you are suffering from hiv number three you are suffering from barrenness it doesn't matter what overflow you are in if you have any of these three cases please with those who are in the main auditorium i want you to join them and come otherwise please all the overflows move to your projector screen and stand there all as directed by the ushers of protocol anyone trusting god for to be prayed for for healing right now i want you to make your way to the front quickly and then in addition to that the three cases i've mentioned 
you come into the main auditorium and join please quickly we have to hurry up overflow one please walk to your projector stand overflow two i don't know from where now as directed walk to your projector stand overflow three walk to your projector stand um my god i don't know if there's overflow two b then just walk as you are directed somebody should stand in front of them and direct them appropriately please overflow four um also just move to your projector stand or as directed those online following from whatever nation of the world just connect by faith as we pray hallelujah now please watch this our time is gone and we're going to be doing this very fast listen please if you are here and you're yet to write your prayer request but adventure you are coming for the first time and you need an opportunity to write your prayer request please someone help them with a piece of paper or whatever it is that you will need everyone you can pen down your prayer request now when you're done please lift it and there will be ushers PR help them protocol help them whoever needs to help them let's make it very fast overflow one two three those online I believe that theirs has also been collated we're going to have everything now so that as soon as we are done we'll pray for the request the moment you are done please wave it or pass it to the person um, at the aisle where it can be picked give them room to write if you need a piece of paper you can help your friend or wave your hand the Lord thank God we have some hands tonight um, Pastor Jakes and Ejimi will do overflow three since there will be several people there overflow three they'll be ministering to overflow three Benga will go to overflow one promise overflow one two um, Kenny overflow two two a now two a or two B praise the Lord Isaac overflow two B Praise the Lord. Ima overflow. Overflow what now? What is left? Huh? Overflow. The last overflow. What overflow for? Okay. No overflow. To be go to overflow four. Praise the Lord. It will have to be a very quick walk because there are several people. I'll minister to the people here. Praise the Lord. Now please listen. Please except they want to talk to you prophetically don't worry listen just a touch is all that you need and i want you to believe by faith as soon as they touch you do what you couldn't do head back to your seat unfortunately because of the limited time we may not have time to take testimonies as you would have seen in many of my external ministrations for two reasons one this is a miracle service dedicated to ministering to people if we pray and say if you are healed come out it will take a lot of time we don't have that luxury of time praise the lord so we are doing three things at the same time one we are praying for the sick has promised okay 
Pastor Alpha, oh, uh, who is in overflow? One, only you, two of you. Okay, Pastor Alpha, join them in overflow. Three, Pastor Femi, uh huh, he, Pastor Femi should go to. Did I give you a place? Pastor Femi, join um, overflow two, two B. Okay, with with Ima now. Two B or four. You are in two. Only you. Okay, so um, Femi, please join him in overflow four. Overflow four. Praise the Lord. Just direct them. Father, in the name of Jesus, we stand by this corporate grace. And we declare, let there be miracles right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Please write your requests, believing the worship team will lead us through a time of worship while we are doing this. It will be very fast. Afterwards, I will just pray and prophesy to everyone and then we'll try to tie it up tonight but whilst you are sitting make sure you connect by faith you can involve your loved ones let them know that god is moving right now he's blessing people lord we give you all the praise let there be great miracles by the spirit of god in jesus name i pray praise the lord thank you for your patience please rise up on your feet if they are still praying for you where wherever whatever overflow don't worry just just hang on there please stretch your hands to this request as we pray i'd like you to open your mouth and begin to declare by the spirit unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come please lift your voice everyone let's have all the requests here please if there are people who are yet to submit Shabarus kabarata shiketia Embratu sezi alakata I'd like you to stretch your hands to this request as you declare that these Egyptians that I see today I see no more forever Shabratus kabarus edegetia Rakata barandas kede balakoto shiata Embratus kabarus shalakatus Rekete baruda shiata Lord, turn impossible situations around in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, release miracles, release solutions, break yokes, oh God. Turn around family situations for your name's sake. Reveal callings, reveal destinies. Let your people find purpose. Let your people find direction. Make sure you are praying. Lord, stay the power of darkness over the requests of your people. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please agree with me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Louder amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, tonight we come to you, the God that can answer prayers. And Lord, I decree, standing in the presence of your people, thousands of people have submitted their requests a representation of their expectations their pain their disappointments their anticipations lord i decree and declare that every spirit that is back of these problems we declare lose your grip now lose your grip now number two I declare that every grace that needs to be released towards you for these requests to be granted by the message of the God of heaven we decree and declare by faith we channel these graces to you every human agent whose mind needs to be touched by God to allow these requests to be answered in the name of Jesus, we call on the Father of Spirits to touch them on that wise. And every request that remains because of the hardness of the hearts of men, we 
break that hardness now. Father, answer speedily. Lord, answer speedily. Turn situations around. Every death sentence represented in this request, we declare that death sentence is cancelled. In the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we give you praise because we declare by faith, the very faith of the Son of God, that these requests are met in Jesus' name. As I stand upon these requests, I declare by the spirit of faith that in the mighty name of Jesus, that which God has done now remains permanent in Jesus' name. And I prophesy over you by the God of heaven, the Egyptians that you see today, that pursued you from Egypt to the Red Sea and beyond, I declare by the Spirit, you will see them no more forever. No matter how long you have been in Egypt, if you go out of Egypt, no going back. In the name of Jesus, between now and the next three weeks, may the God of heaven, in the name of Jesus, 21 days was the maximum time of contention in the realm of the spirit. I decree and declare it will not exceed three weeks. And every request that has been released already but has been hijacked by men and systems i mount pressure on those men and systems to allow this request manifest i mount pressure on those systems allow this request manifest let it be so in the name of jesus give jesus praise hallelujah i'm going to declare the last prophetic one over everyone here Please, I'd like you to be sensitive. Don't be careless about it. Hallelujah. Please, they can come and pick it. I believe in the power of prophecy. The spoken word is also creative. It can make things happen. It not only reveals what will happen, it makes things that has no business happening to happen. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare over you, please hear me, by the God of heaven, every door that has been closed over your destiny, I stand here as the servant of the living God. I force that door to open now. Everyone trusting God for a job, a meaningful job, not a nonsense job that does not have honor. I pray now. A job that will not take your relationship away from God. A job that will not make you compromise. Receive that job in the name of Jesus. I pray for your spiritual life. The kind of fire that you need on your prayer life in this season. I speak over you. Receive fresh fire. Access to revelation, access to light. Receive it in Jesus' name. Every helper of your destiny who must show up in this season to make the word of God to come to pass, I command them to appear now. I preached last week on the book of remembrance. Let me pray that prayer. In the name of Jesus, I open the book, both in the heavens and in the earth, and I declare every good thing you have done to any man on earth, I compel remembrance now. I compel remembrance now. every kind of barrenness biological barrenness financial barrenness career barrenness ministerial barrenness i cause it now and i command it to leave you let me pray over the spirit of death 
any family here appointed unto death i speak by the god of heaven be free now number two every family appointed unto hardship that you will never see the goodness and the salvation of the lord i cancel that pronouncement now listen by the blood of the eternal covenant in the name of jesus i cause every foundational issue that causes hardship and pain and retrogression over your life now the kind of honor you have never seen in your life i speak to you by the spirit step into it let me pray for favor i will never stop praying this prayer till you carry it bodily access to the hearts of kings access to the resources of kings receive it now by favor restoration of visions dreams listen there are many of you who used to have dreams and encounters nothing crosses over you without your eyes seeing it but it looks like you are becoming like eli your eyes becoming dim i pray for you i fan back your vision to flames in the name of jesus every pattern that is in any family you see it in your siblings you see it in your life i declare let it be broken now anyone in ministry here please hear me i speak to you as you return back to your various stations let fire fall upon your altar I pray for everyone in business dying business dead business let it come back to life now please don't just say amen believe creation is happening everything God showed you from the beginning of this year and told you should have entered your hand by now but the devil is adding 30 extra years to your 400 years i push you by prophecy in the name of jesus christ hear me i speak to you by the god of heaven any man that fights you goes down instantly And anyone holding what is yours and has vowed not to release it in the name of Jesus may God humble the pride of wicked men anyone who has said over my dead body for this family to move may God answer their prayers I open the door of favor towards every family here in the name of Jesus all our ladies and all the women that are due to give birth I declare give birth like the Hebrew women in the name of Jesus let me pray for all the gentlemen our time is gone but I must pray for you the grace that establishes a man early may that grace rest on you for those of you who are still 30 years 35 40 50 still loitering your parents house eating your mother's food not just as honor but as a necessity in the name of jesus by the god who is the lifter of men I declare may that reproach live your life now anyone here called barren 
in Jesus name by November miracle service you come here pregnant already let me pray for every ministry here every prayer group every platform intercessory groups churches fresh grace for you in the name of Jesus Christ the final prayer I'm going to pray for you honor is what makes men reward you listen 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 honor is the ability to discern the ability to celebrate and the ability to reward men for their uniqueness you can be as anointed as anything but when honor is not on you men will only just celebrate you from afar but you will never live a rewarded life i pray the prayer that jabez cried unto god for the bible says and jabez was more honorable than his brethren i pray for you everywhere you find yourself rise above your contemporaries let me pray the last prayer point don't say it's not important there are people here your life is not advancing the kingdom in any way this is not altar call this prayer for you to settle down and let your life advance as far as God is concerned you are time on earth if your life does not find a space to advance the kingdom not your work not your service not your worship it looks like nothing about your life there is no kingdom come represented in your life you are just living for yourself hand to mouth to marry have children maybe go to school get a job i redirect your focus now in the name of jesus christ may your life and everything involved around it cause the kingdom the power and the glory of god to be manifest in the name of jesus and every other request here whether mentioned or not i stand in agreement with you in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god receive it as a testimony in the next one minute whether you are in overflow one two three or here you are yet to make jesus lord of your life genuinely please no movement and or you are saying apostle i've handed my life over to jesus but for some reason things have just scattered around my life and i don't seem to gain any footing and bearing and i want to make my way right with god please whether you are in overflow one overflow two the main auditorium aside from overflow three please i'd like you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand here right now koinonia celebrate them don't wait for anyone to come first quickly if you're coming please come and stand come and stand apostle i'm not sure if i'm saved or not join them quickly join them quickly koinonia is this the best you can do join them quickly scripture says you must be born again if you're coming from outside please make it snappy make it as fast as possible hallelujah i salute every one of you here please lift your right hand believe that jesus is here standing before you gentlemen and ladies please join them very quickly if you're coming please come quickly 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 you're coming come very quickly thank you now say this after me say it passionately say it truthfully believing that jesus is here and he will honor your confession of faith say after me lord jesus tonight i believe that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me i believe that you rose again for my justification tonight i ask you to be my lord my savior and my king i receive eternal life into my spirit i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i declare that from tonight and forever 
I move forward ever, backward never. These three ladies didn't pray the prayer. Somebody direct them and let them pray that prayer. The prayer is already finished. You, this yellow girl, and those two, those my sisters. Or shall any of you, are you not Christians? Direct them. Someone pray the prayer with them. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare right now, begin to walk in victory in Jesus' name. I introduce you to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. You will know him. You will walk in his ways. You will command strange results in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. I call you tonight the righteousness of God. I call you that you are part of the family of heaven. In the name of Jesus. All of the people who are just coming, you're welcome. God bless you. Just join that group that they are praying with. And just pray the prayer that they lead you to pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, thank you for these precious ones that you died for. I decree and declare that tonight you receive by faith the abundance of grace, the gift of righteousness, and I declare that you reign in life. Go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. All of you in concert, I want you to follow the lady smiling at you with her hands lifted. Everyone, please follow her. And um, they will direct you to a few people to just follow you or praise the Lord. We believe you are mightily blessed. To connect with the ministry and get more from Apostle Joshua Selman, follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Koinonia ENI. To stream Koinonia Live, go to mixler.com forward slash Koinonia And download the teachings on koinoniasermons.org. For questions and inquiries, call 0814-721-4444 or 0907-777-7853. We love and celebrate you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.